I know it's real. Okay, and now it's real. Um, the order. Let's see. Welcome. Oh, we have lots of people tonight. I can't imagine why. Always glad to have folks. Uh, do we need any changes to the? Yep. Okay. One change we have to add a uh, discussion on the copier contract upstairs. Copier contract. Yep. And we also had an announcement from the Rosen Tax Collector. Okay. I know I'm not delinquent, so I'm not worried. Gotcha. Okay. Is there, that's right. Is there any other public contract comment? I know lots of you are here for the, for the ARPA money. So wait, okay. Let's start with Bob. Yes. Please come up. I just have a few short notes. No, <laughs> that's from the last meeting. <laughs> anyway, I'm Bob Melbon. I'm currently the chair of the planning commission and I'm applying to be on the DRB. And I feel like there should be more connection between the boards and I'm, I'm the alternate on that anyway. Uh, I don't get called in much. It's just when they need to make sure they have a quorum, then Ron gives me a call. It's only been a couple of times in the last couple of years. But I also think four members is a bad balance. It's better to have an uneven number so you can break a tie if something like that comes along. Um, but I think the biggest thing is connection between the two boards. We're getting ready to start rewriting the town plan. And, you know, there'll be things that would get heard in at the DRB and not heard at the non-attended planning commission meetings unless we bring up cannabis and then it gets busy. Anybody have any questions for for Bob? We just usually, when somebody's applying to one of these positions, we have them come in to say hi and talk to them and any questions we might have for them. Is there an existing open term? Or there isn't a position? Where one. There is an open term. Yeah. Yes. So he's applying for that open term. Yeah. Yes. What was the cycle on that one? 24. 24, yeah. I'm all about the book on positions. Me too. The, the last, the last thing, the, the only thing I'm having a little hesitation for is the last time we voted would be heard from one. I, I would like the ERP board to also weigh in on it and make sure that they maybe accept that. I, I don't see. We haven't done that before. The, okay. the the DRB, the alternate to that you've already done, which was make sure that the applicant has participated in a meeting or two with the DRB, or its planning commission member, or okay. I know all committee, just so the people just, are just in the past of the DRB board making decisions for them. I'm I'm not all about it anymore. You know, like I want to make sure there's connection between the select board and the DRB board. Yeah. Just clarify for you. There's no statutory requirement, so don't imply okay. that there is a uh, a pass fail at the DRB level. They can only give you thoughts. You still have to make the final decision. So even if they say no, you can still say yes. Vice versa. Yeah. I just like to make sure that we're going to be. I like to make sure there's. We can do that. So, so, so with the. I don't think there will be a problem, and I'm all about that. But I also want to get the DRP board people. We're not throwing somebody off of the board. No, or the... no, right. Why don't we can we can go ahead and approve it, approve him with the add-on that we check with the DRB, and they don't have any strenuous objections. I like that idea. Yeah. What's the process for going forward? What are you looking for? A comment from the DRB or TC. What are, you, what are you looking for them to say? Well, in the last few times we end up having a group of town forum come in and blast us, and I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just just I'm trying to avoid that. Communications. Mary knows what I'm talking about. Say, no, no. <laughs> I have to... In the past, they've asked us to communicate and why, why the decision or why the overturn. I'm just saying 
why not have a quick communication plus right. yes i'm all about it but i want to right, right. Yeah. Oh. this is a new step so either you're going to do it after or before you're doing it potentially after tonight saying hey by the way we got a tentative appointment on mailbox it's going to fill the vacant term and blah 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 and then we have the new terms which come up every march in bulk pc drb and they have three or four applicants for each position these are open terms where people have left <laughs> what what are they supposed to do say that they went to the drb say that they had an interview with the drb say that they have a letter of recommendation from the drb what's what's the what's the exact thing that you need to get back from those so right, yeah how do we formalize it a lot of times you know people come in and we say if you're interested you should go to a planning commission meeting or two or, or that's a what DRB meeting. Do that. That's what we yeah. do now. So we they, ask they, so they know. Yeah, and they know we do, you, and they're good. Yeah. Okay, then. There yeah. you go. He's already a member. Yeah. Too. So it's, yeah. it's graduating yeah. from an alternate to a full time. So there you go. And he's supposed to fill it automatically. As Mary, I'm not, I'm not gonna, we're not going to have a meeting next week if you're upset that somebody's out of the board. I think that's a terrific idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there, there we go. Okay. Okay. There we go. No, we, we definitely heard loud and clear from the select board that there is nobody to be appointed to the PC or DRB unless the candidate has attended one of those meetings before they came. Okay. I think Leslie Rollins had the lead. Yes, yeah, going to say Leslie. Leslie left. They had to come back in a month because she didn't have a chance to. Right. So, right. Yeah, yeah. so that's the problem. So make sure there's no change to that, or if there is a change, what is that change? Well, I just I think the change is is that right now we don't we don't officially ask from anything from the board that that, that is being appointed to to say, oh yeah, they're good. We just sort of anticipate that's if right. they were miserable, they tell us. You know, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, you know, that's that, that really more than a weird spot. It, it, it all does, and that's why I, again I, I I still don't have any met half of the ERB board. So I think here I am as a select board, and we still haven't had that meeting that we've talked about for a year. But I think that change the change that you made by making sure did you go to the planning commission meeting and sit through a whole meeting was a good change. That was new based on those prior things that you're talking about. So. Uh, Having evidence that you that they met for the minutes, I and mean, you know that's why I'm trying to figure out how to get them through the appointment process and what they have to do to check your right. box. If it's attendance, that's easy. We do that now. If it's a copy of the minutes proving they attended, that's another layer. If you say get a favorable recommendation or a do not appoint memo from the chair of the PC or DR, that's that's for me. This is like my first appointment essentially, right? right. So. Exactly don't, why we don't make it's like a write in or a vote. Say so essentially, that's what I was thinking in my head more like a vote, like their their DRB voted in kind of thing. But no, no. I mean, that's, that's, that's yours. That's that's on your that that's not that's not right. that's pretty much. He has the day had to go to the DRB vote, yeah. right? Okay, and then make sure that's already been done. We do, yeah. we do. Yeah. I just I'm going off of past history, yeah. And also, we make our decisions for the DRB. We're open that we pass that. Okay, yeah. but it is new. You're right. This might be the first one since that initial since Valerie. So it's only been a couple of those where we said you can't go to the select board yet. Can you have that? Leslie was the first. Yeah, one. I yeah. So. yeah, I think so. So yeah. I think that is just. And Leslie's doing. Yeah. She's great to have on the yeah. planning commission. You know, it's just pretty diverse group, and it's the way it should be. Exactly, yeah. because yeah. it's a diverse group. Yeah, I was just with them all upstairs. <laughs> yeah, she had to sit with us. <laughs> it's a diverse group, which is great. This is this is a diverse group. This is great. <laughs> okay, so then I'll make a motion. Yeah, to appoint Bob to the Town Development Review Board. Second. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Great. Do I need to add to the rate? Yes, 2025. Yeah. Just going to say, should I add that? Yes. Okay. So it's not 25. March okay. 25. For, this, okay. for the term ending March 25. So thank you, I hope. Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you, Bob. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll keep right. Uh, the submission of the final scoping report for Green River and for our bridges. Good evening. How are you? Good to see you again. Glad to have you back. <laughs> I think. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I can say uh, briefly, uh, nothing has changed as far as our recommendation is concerned. Uh, since I uh, met with you last, we've done a little more refinement of our hydrologic and hydraulic model on both of the crossings. Uh, at Wickham Island, 
Uh, if you remember, our discussion was about maintaining a, a free span across the river. Uh, we were showing a bridge that exceeded the maximum span length uh, previously. So we narrowed that down to 75 feet, which is about the maximum. Uh, we've raised the low cord elevation uh, about a half a foot and we're able to pass the 50 year storm uh, free and clear. So we were happy with those results. Uh, at Garfield Road, we made some adjustments to both the inlet and the outlet uh, inverts, um, just to more accurately represent what would be occurring with a, with a bridge location there. Uh, so again, the, the whole idea is that the inlet will more or less be close to the current invert elevation, but will be eliminating that riprap spillway or splash pad at the outlet end so that we're achieving something that's closer or at uh, natural stream channel elevation. Okay. That sounded impossible early on. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, retaining, well, the retaining walls in that design. And I, I'll, be you, honest, I'll be honest, I went home and had buyer remorse on I should have said I abstain. I, I, I take, I still feel like, especially it's going to be a 25% payment to the tax. I do this up for a living. My my guess is that bridge would be more to like three and a half, four million dollar project. There are significant wing walls on the downstream side. And 25% to the town, I'm seeing the million dollar cost. So for me, I have buyer's remorse versus the arch would have been somewhere in the five hundred thousand dollars. And we're talking a hundred thousand dollars to the town back here. So I did go home and sleep on that one. And just so that it's said I <laughs> Maybe we'll check for 90%. Yeah. No, no. You're, we're yeah. going to have to definitely get there because I don't think we could, we could try. There's a, the, this is part of the uh, federal disaster right, of 2019. So there may be supplemental funds on top of the 75, which is the, the FEMA, constructability. That's, that's the FEMA share. The constructability of that project will be here. So. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. The abutments will be, you know, 25, 30 feet tall. Mm -hmm. It's significant. Yeah. Um, let's see, uh, some additional updates included uh, the plan. So if you're reviewing the plans, you might want to take a, another peek at the final version here. Uh, they're just dressed up a little bit more uh, accurate now with our recommended alternative. Um, there's a little more detail on the, the permitting review. Uh, we've submitted our letter to SHPO for their comment. Um, we added some comment about uh, managing not weed prior to construction. Um, yeah, we're going to get some goals. <laughs> <laughs> Let them lose that. Yeah, yeah. Some stopping goats for that. Well, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Have to put it in the book things for them. <laughs> uh, Let's see, and uh, we added in the whole discussion on the uh, benefit cost analysis. So I, I think we've got everything covered that we talked about last time. I um, feel like the reports are um, more complete at this point. So, but nothing's changed as far as the overall recommendation and our findings. It almost sounds like the whitewater rafters will get through. There, yeah, I mean, there's enough clearance. There's your 10%. Uh, they have money. <laughs> <There's>... <laughs> <laughs> we're left him speechless. So, that's right. So, right now, funding wise, we're okay with Whitcomb and uh, and Garfield is on hold. <laughs> yeah. yeah and all that stuff, but it's a long ways off. So another board would most likely ask to face your dilemma. Right. And hopefully not because we'll be solved something. Right? I was outvoted anyway, so I agree with you. Look at me. No, that's a, that's a real concern. No, it it's, is. It's, it's, yeah, we just got to keep looking for that, for the higher funding ratio. That, mm -hmm. that addresses part of it for you anyway. That's where that's where I come into yeah. to continue yeah. to help with that. And yeah. Before we go to construction and have construction ready for us, we'll make sure that it is the, the current select board at that time yeah. is comfortable with what yeah. is 
being prepared for, for engineering. So all of the other alternatives are still in the report. Okay. Yeah, uh, right. You've got the report. Yeah. Yeah. There, you got your baseline here. Yeah. yeah. It, it, what actually gets built is yet to be determined when you are at the construction stage. The purpose of this is an indication of your preference at this time, given the information you have today. Yeah. Gosh, right here, you got any questions on it? Yeah. That's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading through. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, that's true. It, it was flooding and, and damages from flooding will be minimized at both locations. Exactly. Yeah. The, the well, well, especially big, 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 the dial one. Yeah. You don't suggest going higher and picking the whole road for like go, for like picking a picking a court. No, the Barnes, for, oh. Barnes Road. Like picking we it. We will need and to it, raise Barnes Road right. at that team. even more. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing that says because you're only going for a 50 year flood. Why not head for 100? Yeah, there's and nothing the that cord, the cord height will probably be two and a half feet, 30 inches more. So I was estimating, you know, we're going to have to chase grade in both directions, probably right. a couple hundred feet. So but that's it's got the availability. Yeah, there. I, I really think that it's doable from flood, flood reasons that why not? And that, that bridge has been flooded multiple times. And oh, it, yeah. it, Every time, even that, right? I thought sometimes the smallest rainstorms, I feel like. Um, Especially when the debris gets right. Why not? Why not head for that Q100 instead of the Q50? That's, that's, not, that's not off the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. No, sure. FEMA, FEMA, may, FEMA may push back because so it wasn't in the scoping. Right. But that that you would have to make a better argument. Why? Yeah. Uh, so really, 50 years road construction a couple hundred feet is not a big deal. I, I personally don't feel. I mean, that you're not talking a million dollars a mile on a dirt road. You're talking. The thing you got to think about sending houses out there. I think it's just that one drive yeah. and the grade is it, correct it, it, for that. It comes up enough. Right. The three votes. Yeah, because there's only one. Yeah. Three votes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Two, there's two. Three votes on the west and all rich is on the east. Yeah, but they're up further even. I mean, oh, they're right at the dry hydrant, the oh. fire. Oh, they are. Right at the intersection of the driveway to the, go straight up the hill you can. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. yeah, there's two. There's two that would be most. Correct. I have my suggestion. That. No, that's a good one uh, because um, yeah, our results suggest there's only tenth of a foot or so clearance with the 50 year storm. Right. So uh, we we that's talked right. about this a little bit last time. Just you know debris flow and you know that exasperating the the flooding effect uh, once you get a log or two jammed underneath there. So would be smart. Yeah, there's clearance up there. Don't want the house to take it right. And again, we own our own bed, so like a borrow source is a big deal. It's not like mm -hmm. <clears throat> small potatoes compared to concrete or, or mm -hmm. the roads that get moved by river. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any more questions for We're good. So have a motion to accept the final scoping report dated today. Uh, yes, I did it today. Um, be, before they vote, too, um, I noted this when I submitted it to you. Uh, the Wickham Island has a couple blanks in the H and H summary table, so I'll I'll reissue with the same date. Um, but I just needed a couple additional numbers from there. Yeah, but dated today. You got it. Okay. Got a motion. I will make the motion to accept the report, final report, with edits stated May 23rd, 2023. Okay. Got a second? Oh, we've got a second there. I'll second it. Okay. <laughs> All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Thank you very Thank much. Thanks very much. Thank Appreciate much. working with you. Thank you. And the final invoice soon. Okay. Try to post it in a year. Get it in there. Thank you, Bob. Yes. Thank you, Bob. Okay. Not very often. You didn't pay the money, not some bills. She told me that before I made the motion, I'm going to include it in her. They pay that. Right. They send the bill. Okay. Now. Let's stop. Arpa. 
So we got our, we got it. Ron sent us a sheet. People have their sheet. Oh, yeah. And we've been, Ron reached out, we've invited people that already have, um, have made requests and have waited or some new requests from folks so that we can begin to um, zero in on how we want this to spend this money. Um, you can see up at the top, we've got, make the math easy, we got $740,000. Um, Hundred and fifty two has been spent. Right. Yeah. Uh yeah. Committed, if not all spent. Um what we what we do, and I think most folks aren't aware, is just so for people to know that the village has ARPA funds of one forty. One hundred and forty thousand dollars. Yeah, most people in the village don't. Um, <laughs> and I haven't seen anything of, of their outreach or, or you know what they're doing or anything, but that, that's okay. another that's another pool of, of money for that that's in the community yes. as ARPA funds. Okay. Um how about if yeah, shall we I suggest we just hear from folks that are that are here. And then have a reasonably complete list, and then we'll sort of start hashing it from there. That's a good idea. So we heard we heard from Wiffy in the church request hey, last, last week. Meeting. Yeah, last meeting. Who, who'd like to volunteer to go next? Beth, oh, you want to go? I, know. I can count on Beth. Well, and she was so successful the last time. Yeah, was really. Here. You can see why she's back. She's yeah. like, well, that well, works. But this is a totally different hat. So okay. it's a okay. different hat. All right. So I am here representing Lamoille County Players. I am president of Lamoille County Players. Um, and so we didn't know about the village funds till yesterday either. And we, I've contacted Brian, but we haven't heard back. So I don't know if they have money so, um, to spend. So the Opera House is owned by the village and rented by Lamoille County Players for a dollar a year. And in return, we take care of it, upgrade it, maintain everything. And, um, and we've never asked for money. We've never asked the village. I don't think we've, in my knowledge, ever asked for any money at town meeting. Um, and we've done capital campaigns and we've done an absolute ton of improvements, you know, the um, air conditioning, we have furnace, um, just on and on and on things that we've we've done. And I think I hope people think we're taking good care. Oh, we had so repair. I mean, there's a long list. So anyways, we we're trying very hard to take good care of this old building. So last week it was I it was brought to my attention that the roof leaked. And then it was brought to my attention that it's really expensive to fix the roof when it leaks. So it sort of ran through my head that um, this might be a good time to ask for ARPA funds because I'm more comfortable asking for that money because I'm not asking for the town to raise the town taxes. It's a different thing to me. So um, well, this came all together this weekend. So we said, okay, we don't have a definite quote yet the last time we fixed the it's a slate roof that's the issue the last time we fixed the roof was 10 years ago and there in the letter it's almost ten thousand dollars so we're pretty sure it'll probably be ten thousand dollars this time and we've contacted people roofing company rod and sons to come give us a quote so we don't have all our little ducks in a row for this meeting but we wanted to be on your radar and now we are on the village radar as well um so we that's what I'm that's what we're thinking. Sure. sure. Do, do any of those do you have any idea when those folks may get back to you with a quote? Because I mean we may make some decisions tonight, but it's not 
we're just realizing there is a timeline and we need to get ourselves organized. So you have time if you get a quote to let us know well, what they give you for a real number. We, it's route. They can't, okay. So Patty, who wrote the letter, Patty is the treasurer, Patty Jacobs. She can't, we were not in any rush because, but now we're in a rush. So she contacted them again yesterday, but they haven't gotten back to us. I'm a, we're asking for $10,000. Obviously, if it's less, woohoo, we'd give the extra money back if you want. That'd be fine. And if it's more, then we just assume that we'll have to pay for it unless we are. Well, if you have time again, so that we unless we can get an exact estimate and bring it into you. But are we beating on their door to get the estimate? Oh, yeah, we are. Okay. Yeah. So, but that's, but since we only came up with it, I came up with this this excellent idea. I hope you think it's excellent. Um, yeah, on Saturday. So, and it's now Tuesday. So that's, um, but we didn't, you know, I thought it was important to come right away and say, you know, the roof was nice enough to leak when there's ARPA funds. So we thought we'd come and mention it. So that's, that's what I've got. Okay. Okay. Well, and when, and when you get a, a, a real number, just text Ron and let him know what it is. Okay. You are going to go to the building as well. What, what? You're going to request of the village. Oh yeah. Well see I once this started, I had no idea the village had money. Right. You know, they didn't ask like you town was nice and said, hey you guys, we have money. What you know I didn't know. And as soon as I find out, because obviously it's a village owned building, you know, that should make sense. So but thank you. Um, yeah. Off subject, did you spend all your allocations for the shed? For what? Did you spend all the allocations for the shed? Yes. Right. That's no, a. I mean, no, that's there's, a, there's an obligation, which is on your sheet at right sixty five hundred. Yeah. What do you spend on it? Fifty one, and they're still working on shelving parts and pieces. So we're not done yet. Can we yeah. get a price to put some gutters on it so it's not rotted out in five months? You can find them. Right, and that has nothing to do with Lamoille County players. That's my other. Yeah, but you said you were gone. You leave it, but I didn't. I didn't want you. Oh, okay. Right. Turn back around and come back. And be the, and be the I mean, yeah. be no, I, I think that's an excellent idea. Yeah, that's an sure. excellent. I looked idea. up on it today, walked up, and you can see everything slacked up, and your sheds are going to last maybe three years, be rotted out if you don't put gutters on it. So, okay, it's okay. OSB siding. It's I mean, not last. It needs to be treated. It does. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Am I good? Yeah. All yeah. right. Thank you very much. Oh yeah. Shall be done. Finish it off. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. All right. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Okay. Who's the next volunteer? Come on, Amy. <laughs> the topic I'm very passionate about. Butters. <laughs> No, oh. sewer. <laughs> We're going from gutters to sewers. I don't care about gutters. It's the sewer. It's the sewer. Because I've been dealing with it for a very long time at the library. So our sewer was nice enough to back up way before we had ARPA money. But now that we do, um, it also aligns with when um, this, I'm from the Landfair Memorial Library, Amy Olson, library director. Um, so anyway, the clay pipes, um, keep getting clogged up with uh, debris. We've been spending lots. Well, we've had the tree roots ground out, but it's also because of all the connectors, there's stuff that gets stuck there and then it builds up. So Menashe has come twice in the past this year, this calendar year in February and April to flush it out. Um, but for 18 years that I've been the library director, we've just been treating the symptoms. And now that we know what the cause is, the clay pipes need to re be replaced. Um, update from Anosh today, they called me about 10 minutes before we closed at five o'clock to let me know that um, that it'll probably be more like $10,000 and not $30,000. So that's the good news because they, they, right. Well, they don't have to go into the road. So originally they thought they were going to have to tear up the pavement and go into the road, but they came today and ran the camera through just to see how far they could get it there. And so that's the good news. So it'll be $10,000. Also didn't know about village money and like the sewer water is kind of a village thing, but the town, the library is a municipal library. So. Well, right. And uh, the distance between a building and where you connect to the system 
is the property owner's responsibility. Right. Right. Yeah. So that makes it, it's our responsibility. It's our responsibility. It's typically responsibility. I did reach out to the village and ask if they were planning to work on the sewer lines anytime soon, just to see, I, I think I remember them saying that they didn't pave main street and church street right. when they were doing the water, right. just because eventually so they would be, they didn't want, yeah. yeah. And so if, if they were planning to do it soon, maybe we could come up with a plan to yeah. do some just update prevented main preventive maintenance of having Minash flush the systems every once in a while. But, um, but I don't think they're planning to do it soon enough. No. Well, and even if they did there, this piece would still be uh, yeah, you our responsibility. Still yeah. 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 Still be our responsibility. So, yeah. So anyway, we've, yeah, like, okay. we've, actually been working with like we have a system and yeah. it's happened so often that we have a system in place for when it happens so like yeah. i call minash i call mark french mm -hmm. he comes over the wet back and luckily since last year it hasn't been something that we've also had to hire a serve pro to clean up you know so it's like it's really expensive um so anyway right. super cool hey, thank you Anna. are you ready for ghosts or is there something more important yeah. More important than goats. Wait, my ass is quite no, no. Cold. She was here. She was here last week. Talk uh, to me today. Well, you did. Come up, have a chair. <laughs> That's the cheering section back there. Come on up. Well, this all started back when this guy started a fiber committee in Hyde Park. And Carol and I are two of the original members of it. And we've gone on from there quite considerably, actually. Yeah. Uh, we're now part of what's called the Communications Union District, or a CUD, depending on who you've heard it from. Um, it's called the Lamoille Fibernet Communications Union District, or LFCUD, which is a lot smaller. Uh, he's got a presentation I guess he's going to bring up for you. And also have Lisa. She's waving. Oh, there, oh, there's Lisa. <laughs> Lisa Birmingham is our uh, current uh, executive director, and she's up there. And that's the presentation that we've all got. Thank you. How do I make this? Okay, why don't you just go to the next? Go to the All right, you're just figuring it out right now. Here. I think you just hit slide over the top of the top slide down. Down, down, left, left, slide down. You slide over. You have to slide over. No, the path on the top. If you do a slideshow or. Oh, right there. Yeah. <laughs> this is telling. And then, right there, and then to the left, point. from current slide or from the beginning. Oh. Yeah, we can't do it. <laughs> so I hit the slideshow, and now we're from the beginning, all the way to the left. Okay. Oh, okay. Boom. And then the next time you click there it, you yeah. there we go. Next one, that so go to the next slide. <laughs> yeah. Is here. There we go. Oh. So one of one of the uh, issues we get we get some grants from the federal government and well we we don't get them directly, they go a tortuous path through our uh, to us. But I won't bore you with going through the door to his back. But part of that, part of the amount of money we can get is dependent on the amount of money we have. So we have to have matching funds. Okay. And the money that we're getting from ARPA and from anything else that we can get money from then goes to that pool. Um, another thing that's in so you're saying you get to use ARPA money as a match. Right. Gotcha. And, you know, so it gets at least double, yeah, sometimes sure. more, but yep. normally yep. double. Yep. Uh, wait, wait. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There'll be a test. Oh, There'll be a test okay. after yeah. this. Oh, one forward. <laughs> <laughs> one forward. Yeah. There, there we go. go. There we go. So um, yeah. I think that just does what I just said. I can't think. Well, yeah, VCBB is the state uh, arm that is 
give, giving out the grants for uh, all that are coming for broadband. So okay. it's a Vermont Community Broadband Board, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. I, I listened to a lot of it, but I don't wow. remember yeah. what the abbreviation is. Um, okay, ready next? Uh, so, yeah, go to the next slide. I guess we'll. Now, um, it's important to recognize that the first phase of everything that we can do has to be to provide fiber to the unserved and underserved by the federal definition. And this is just a complicated slide trying to say that there's a bunch of them in Hyde Park. And I, I know some of the paths that the first phase would go and, and uh, provide fiber to, but I don't know them all. You know, they're just scattered around throughout the town. But the federal money can only be spent to uh, unserved and underserved people. On okay. residences, I should say. Okay. So, yeah. could you explain so, and it, could you explain the colors? Uh, yes. Yeah. The uh, Michael, <laughs> do you want me the? So Hyde Park um, Town and Hyde Park Village have approximately um, three hundred and ninety addresses that are unserved or underserved, and those are depicted on this. Um, this is a, a map that the BCBB publishes. The light brown and red are all un or underserved. Um, you have a few, but not many on this map of what's called um, wireless or Starlink, which has sufficient speed, but it's not a wireline connected. So that's also considered underserved. And so compared to, you're actually, Hyde, Hyde Park is actually roughly 26% um, unserved or underserved compared to the rest of Lamoille County, which is 42% unserved or underserved. And our mission is to first and foremost, as, as Michael just said, reach all of these um, unserved and underserved addresses um, with affordable uh, fiber services. Um, and our the VCBB will also give us um, a construction grant, but that only covers roughly 60% of the cost. And so they have a special program, which is why we're here tonight, which will double whatever a local community um, commits. So if Hyde Park commits local ARPA funds, I think we're asking for 50,000, then the VCBB will match that and then require that, um, that funding to be spent only in Hyde Park. And one of the things I just learned from what you said tonight is that there's another uh, quantity of money, 144,000, I think you said, yes, sir. sitting yeah. in the town and the, the village. The village yeah, so the village. you should be able to get part of that as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go after that. Okay, I guess. What, what, <laughs> having no idea, and, and you know, you just hear about the, millions of dollars that are being rolled out in these projects around the state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What does a hundred thousand dollars buy? That is a that's a great question. So um, the average cost of an aerial mile is um, somewhere between 30 and forty thousand okay. dollars. The average cost for an underground mile, um, which there actually is some in um, portions of um, High Park is about 118,000 a mile. Our hope is you can, we'll, we'll work with any town select board to identify what your priority need is. Um, to give you an example, um, Belvedere um, is prioritizing, making sure that the town office has fiber and making sure that residents, um, uh, uh, we, that we're gonna subsidize the installation costs for residents. Um, and then whatever is left will go to the general construction. Um, other towns such as uh, uh, Waterville and Johnson say, hey, spend it on what you need to spend it on, but in our community. So, um, and I think there's a, a slide coming up that shows you who's who's committed, but it's up to you. If, if you wanna direct us to say um, a specific use such as general construction or subsidizing drops or getting it to the reservoir or particular um, town facility, you know, we're happy to work with you. Yeah. The, the other thing is, 
we, we have to operate within the federal designation for what um, un underserved is, which is 25, being able to get 25 megabit down and three megabits up. Uh, Vermont has their own and it's 100 over 100. So it would be a lot better, but the only way we can actually spend the federal money is if it's not 25 over three. It's sort of bizarre in a way, but that's what it is. So, so Susan asked you about how you get to it, and you mentioned you mentioned 30, 390 people essentially, right? And then you mentioned 30,000 per area mile. How many area miles are we lacking right now? So we don't, right now we're in a high, the high level design phase. I think Hyde Park is roughly about 50, 60 miles um, to, because we have to get from um, Morrisville and Johnson and Bell, I think it's coming down through um, Eden. So we have, we've got a high level design. We'll be working on the detailed design um, this fall. So we'll have a more approximate um, and we will work with the select board and then the road commissioner and anybody else on, on the construction schedule, build schedule. That I answer the question? Not really. I, I, so, I'm more, so, I'm more, I'm more like efficiency, bang for your buck. If, if, if it's about serving members, you know, like what would be the, the, the most, based on what she just said, we're 50 miles, 60 miles at 30,000 miles. My quick math tells me that's $1.5 million. Short no, it's not spent. cheap, it's not <laughs> expensive for okay. what we're doing. At 50,000 square feet. Oh yeah, and we've got we're we have other grants that are filling that are um, our business plan will accommodate um, the full full build or at least where right now the plan has us at um, serving eighty five percent of the needed areas in our first phase with funding with the funding we expect to get from the BCBB and our business partners. In other words, we're, we're going to leverage the money. Let's say we get 50,000 from the ARPA funds for Hyde Park. We're going to leverage that 50,000 to cover the whole unserved and underserved group of residences that we have in Hyde Park. I mean, that's, that's what the plan is. All 300. So, yeah. Now, right, there, so may be, there may be a, a few that are just unreachable in some crazy way but it basically the whole the whole lot now it doesn't mean that we'll get in this first phase it doesn't mean that we'll get all of the people that already have 25 free we should because that's not fast enough really but the federal money won't let us do that first so we have to do first the people that are under 25 free or don't have any service at all Right. So everybody has a minimum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. You got to get everybody to a minimum and then you can start increasing the quantity. Yeah. Yeah. Or if they have the minimum, we can come in with fiber later. You know, right. let's suppose right. I got it from right. consolidated get, or something. The, goal, the initial goal is to get everybody to the minimum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, actually, and I would say that um, by statute, we have to deliver fiber services and so our speed we have to offer at least 100 over 100 um and as you can see from the the map that was shown that the minimum um is actually 25 three so what we'll be we'll be delivering is a lot uh, more robust but that that's how the state law worked the 100 over 100 is the state requirement. So right. since we're in Vermont, we have to deliver that. We have to offer that. Yeah. But, which is good enough so far. Yeah. Probably change okay. another five so years. The, in my, the other pieces that are the BCBB's matching funds, they, they started this um, program um, last year and 
it's sunsetting um, in June, and we have to we're submitting our applications as the slide says our our commitment letters next um, uh, next week. Um, right, if we're going to do this. We got to do this one, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and we've got a for BCBB. We've got to have a commitment letter to them from Lamoille Fibernet saying we're going to do whatever we're going to do by the 23rd. Uh, sorry, by the 31st of May. So yeah. we need to act pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Excuse my ignorance or lack of knowledge, whatever have you. Um, you. You guys supply the fiber up on aerial, and then there still would be a service that customers would have to pay to, or who owns the services. It depends on this is who like, owns the, 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 the actual fiber. Consolidated um, or, or uh, an entity to that. It depends on exactly which piece of it you're looking at, who will end up owning it. And there's some federal regulations involved in all this. At the end of the day, I don't know whether the Wild Fibernet is going to own it or uh, whoever we choose as a vendor to install it will actually own it. It'll depend on you know the contract, the, the actual details of the contract. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. we're close. We're we issued an RFP um, late in 2022 and have um, we're in the process of finalizing. We've selected a vendor and are finalizing um, an agreement right now. Um, so with an internet service provider. To, to bring the services um, over what um, the network that we build. And one of the conditions of our um, RFP was that the, the providers need to participate in the um, American uh, Affordable Connectivity Program, which is a, also a federal program uh, that credits people $30 a month for their internet service. And, um, I have to say the, uh, what we've learned about Hyde Park is that you guys, actually there are about 400 re residents that qualify for that program. And Hyde Park has one of the higher rates, subscription rates for that program um, in the county. It's, but it's only 7%. So you can see we have a lot of work to do to help families get connected, which is one of the reasons we suggest that towns um, leverage their local ARPA funds to help cover um, or reduce the, the cost for, for drops or installations because not everyone lives right on the road or right next to the pole. And um, it, that can cost from just a couple hundred dollars to a couple thousand dollars, depending on how long your driveway is. It comes down to the same thing as your sewer connection. To the yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, it is. It's between yeah. In the in the main yeah. Yeah. Okay. one of the one of the big things we've been trying to make sure we have is a very reasonably priced entry to this, you know, not a hundred dollars a month, but more like thirty-five, forty dollars a month so that people can afford it. It's crazy mm -hmm. to have to have everybody paying a right. hundred dollars a month too. Right. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff that's gone into this. I mean, I don't remember when we started. You remember when we started the the Hyde Park Fiber Committee. Oh, okay. It was, it was, yeah, 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 yeah. It was a good while ago. <laughs> yeah. I can't well, believe it. Yeah, well, this is... it, it's got all these little details in that you don't figure, you know, and then you get into it and you find all the little details. Mm -hmm. And it's all of us that are involved with this are pretty technical, you know, so we've got a lot of experience <laughs> with it. Particularly her. <laughs> She's been as experienced with Microsoft. School at home. Yeah. Yeah. We, we had one of our board members had to drive to the library to get internet service every year. Mm -hmm. um, I, I find in listening what you can do with this money that my interest is peaked at having some of it and again i think it's sort of at your discretion because you know what you need but helping folks make that connection yeah. you know because mm -hmm. that's uh 
yeah, for some of us, a couple hundred bucks is, yeah, I could figure that out. But for other folks, that would yeah. be a, well, that'll, that'll stop you. In your that's right. And for a lot of, for a lot of the negotiations we're involved with, it, how much will the internet service provider pay in, in effect? How much will they pay for every connection? Because they can, right. they can cover the first 200 feet or the first 400 feet or what, whatever number we can get them to, to pay, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. Especially if they know they're going to get a lot of connections. Yes. Right. right. Because that's the whole thing. If you're in that exactly. a big area. And a lot of this began because uh, the bigger internet service providers wouldn't yeah. come yeah. to your house unless you spent a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. They used to have DSL where you had to pay. Uh, got crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, what, what, other, what other questions? Anything think, doesn't make sense? Perfect opportunity to find out what doesn't make sense. But <laughs> internet is, I mean, it's, it's another thing to provide a bunch of uh, economic vitality to the town, which we don't yeah. really think of, but now people ask, you know, they didn't used to, but now they do. Some of us knew it to begin with, but a lot of people know it. I was just curious, I saw somewhere, I think it was in the front porch forum post, that the towns that are have signed up to make a contribution. Why were Stowe and Morristown not on that list? Are they just already too served or they're going their own? They're not part of Lamoille Fiber or is that- They are part, part of Lamoille Fiber. Yeah. In fact, our executive director, uh, I mean, our, our chair comes from Morristown. But, uh, you know, you have to get into the politics at, okay. at each level. Yeah. I mean, Stowe is Stowe, you know, what are you going to say about Stowe? <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, so Stowe, Stowe, Elmore, and Morrisville, I think there's another slide that shows the commitments of the other towns. Is that the next slide? Boom, there you go. Um, the, Stowe and Morrisville had already committed their funds for other purposes, and Elmore, um, the same with Elmore, uh, it, uh, Elmore built a, a garage. Um, and Stowe um, used it for two or three purposes. And so that was committed during the last budget cycle and the same with Morrisville. So that's, we missed the opportunity, frankly. I don't think it's, um, they um, are all still very supportive of the CUD because they all have considerable unserved uh, portions of their communities. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send a copy of that little green section to Bob Burley and Elmore and tell him what the hell's going on. <laughs> <laughs> he's the guy that he's very technical. I mean, yeah. you, you don't know his background, but he is. And it, I can't believe that there's no money coming from Elmore, but that's a different problem. That doesn't affect Hyde Park directly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so do you have any more questions? Any more ideas? <laughs> I've never even heard of it, so there you go. I'm ashamed to admit that. But yeah, thank you. Very interesting. Thank you very much for listening and for your consideration. When we see you're under a deadline, too. I, so. I think the biggest yeah. part to keep in mind is not only that. Okay, we're gonna use the money to match, but we're gonna come back and talk to, and I don't know who we should be talking to, but probably start with him, but uh, exactly what are we going to do with the money? You know, because there are choices in Hyde Park. You know, should we bring it here? Yeah. Well, do right. we need it? I don't know. Yeah. Should this be the first choice? Maybe it should, maybe it shouldn't. But that kind of question has to go on. Mm -hmm. And we have to benefit. I mean, bringing it here, if, if we have lousy internet here, then bringing it here might be the biggest advantage to the total number of people. Maybe the school is too, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, all the schools. I don't know what exact right. addresses yeah. we're going to want to do. But when that time comes, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Okay. Well, that that kind of local fine. decision making, right? Well, right. And I'm glad that's part of it. That helps. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.
I've been good. I haven't eaten the Reese's peanut butter. Apple for the world. <laughs> oh, I didn't. Oh, yeah. I'm going yeah. with that. <laughs> <That's best. laughs> I'm getting ready to say you need to pass that down to see what I got. I'm not talking to myself. I know. Okay. Let's go. Candy. Huh? Since when is there candy at the select room? When we know we're going to be here. She has. And she started at a couple of meetings ago. Um, yeah. If you want it, I've got a letter that I can email you. I'll send to Ron. Yep. Yep. Okay. That would be good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Give the staff. Give the second. This is Stephanie. Got to go to Twix. Okay. Um, You're bad. If Valerie Valcour is online, she has her hand raised. I'm sure the oh, oh, sorry. I didn't say about time. Well, let, Valerie, are you okay? We're going to listen to Mary, or do something you want to throw in now? You're good. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is a highly technical discussion I would like to have with you. Um, <laughs> it's, it's true. After coming after this one, is like, okay, now we're down to goats. Okay. So um, to back up, I, I, I don't know how many of you have actually visited what we call the Gamble property, but it's a parcel of land in North Hyde Park, which is owned by the town. And I don't know the long history of it, but I did happen to look up on the land records that I think you've owned it since 2013. And I don't know what you've done to maintain it, not you personally, but the town has done to maintain it. I don't think very much. Um, and the reason it's sort of on my mind through the Not in Hyde Park Committee is that the select board gave us permission to use that as a sort of base to start to get to do the work we wanted to do, um, trying to manage the spread of knotweed so that we could use that parcel, which is infested with knotweed, as a sort of safe place to, to work and not screw anything up. And so for the last two summers, we, we've we used it, we thought we were gonna need it to, to, to take uh, material to like green stalks that we cut, but we haven't needed to do that a little bit, but not really, uh, because the drying stacks that we use at the sites pretty much take care of that. And occasionally we need a place to dump some stuff to dry. But the main thing is we've um, uh, used it as a place to set up some pallets to dry root masses that have come from other sites because it's a safe place to leave them. And it takes a long time to kill a big root mass of, of knotweed. And for example, the, the ones that we've left out all summer long baking in the sun and, and then they sit through the winter and freeze, you can still occasionally get a little stalk coming out. But most of the stuff up there is now dead, dead, dead. But what is apparent is that because this has not been really maintained is that there's a lot of knotweed there and it's really continuing to grow. And it's not something that we can manage as a volunteer group. And um, so in a way, I'm, I'm bringing you a problem that you'd rather not have, which is this parcel, I think, should be started to be worked on. And Ron came up to see the site the other day. And there's also another invasive plant there called multiflora rose. I'm pretty sure that's the plant anyway. It's a, it's a, pretty, it's a very invasive, uh, thorny rose um, that smells beautiful, but it just spreads like crazy as well. So the... Um, as you know, also, I, I, I came here in the fall to say I'd love to find a way to try and use goats somewhere in Hyde Park to, to demonstrate that this is you can use livestock to manage knotweed. And, um, and really, through Matt's connection to um, Dan Bernor, who just happened, he and his wife just inherited, um, well, some large number of goats, 20, maybe maybe 25, a couple have gone missing, um, <laughs> but and, and not their fault, not no. the owner's fault, no. Um, so, and he uh, is willing to bring some goats to this site and look after the goats. And it happens to be on this property, there's also a, an old pool shed. And Dan looked at that. So the goats need shelter, water, and fencing. And he looked, he's in construction, Right, and he looked at that um, uh, 
building that's in decent enough shape. It has no roof on it. It's too big a shelter and it's in the wrong place, but he said he would cut it off its foundations, cut it in half and put it somewhere near the knotweed and we'd fence it in. And um, so he's, he's up for it. So the hard part, I don't know if you've looked at my note, but the hard part about this is not whether the goats will chew the knotweed, they will do. And, and to be clear, this is a many seasoned approach to managing knotweed. You just keep mowing it down instead of using a mower and gasoline, you're using goats um, and or human labor for free, you're using goats. Um, so the proposition is fence it in, some portion of it that you're willing to fence in and um, uh, put some goats in there and see how we get on. Um, it, it solves the problem of needing to maintain it. The alternative is you could hire somebody to start to uh, mow it, um, or you could do nothing. The, the other thing is I should say, I've spoken to um, Ken Harvey because his he now owns the parcel adjacent to this and he would be willing to, you know, the, the knotweed is moving his way. We could put the, the goats on that as well. So. That's the proposition. I, I think I got my math a little bit wrong on the note that I sent to you, and I'm not quite sure how I let that happen, but um, the amount of money um, that, that I put on here is a minimum of $1,500, but I think I underestimated the, the, um, the amount of fencing that you got for that. I know the, I know the math. That was that, my thought. I was saying, I it's not much fencing. No. <laughs> it's, well, you mean the the size that I that I no, put there? It depends on the price. You can do like a temporary electric fence. Oh really? Well, well they, so they no, we can't use electric fence for this, and the reason is that the goats goats need to. Uh, I'm, I'm, this is my goat knowledge acquired <laughs> through speaking to three goat specialists, not from personal experience. <laughs> Goats need to be trained to respond to electric fence. I don't know if that's true of all am, animals. Any animals. Okay. And these goats have not been trained uh, yet. So there are a couple of ways this could go. I don't have to get into too much detail, but so the, the fencing that's proposed is a fixed fence. It's, it's um, you can get them at Tractor Supply, 16 foot lengths, 50 inches high. Um, I've now seen these at two goat places yep. that people are using, and, and um, Brian Jones, I've consulted him as well. Yep. No problem, they'll keep them in. So, uh, and Dan's proposal is you have those and, and two um, of those green steel posts that are yep. about five bucks a piece. And the problem with starting small, the, the good, the reason to start small is see how, how it goes. See how it goes. Yeah. But everything that is coming to me is that these goats are going to chew down their patch quite quickly. And what that then means is that Dan and somebody else is going to have to come and move the fence again, right? Because it's not as portable. Yeah. Put it over here and then move it back. So the, the larger area would be better to just extend the length of time the goats could be in the place. I don't know quite how large an area that is, to be frank with you, but uh, the important thing is that for about a thousand dollars, I think you can get, I want to say, hold on, I wrote down, it's 200 and, um, I'm not a fence expert either, um, 288 feet by 96 feet. Let's say, what's the acreage of the property? Half, I think. Half acre. A couple different scripts. That would be exactly what that is. Would it? Yeah, like 200 by 200 is, is, is an acre. So I think 100, yeah. 4,200 to 56 square feet of an acre. So you've got about 20,000 square feet. So that's about half acre. Yeah. So. <laughs> so. So well, that's 200 by nine. I don't know if you figured it times two. So if you're if, if you ran that linear, that would you may have multiplied that. I knew I wouldn't have made the mistake on our math that badly. <laughs> <laughs> so let me correct myself again. I was sitting on the box. At the, yes, I'm so sorry. That's so embarrassing. And while the whole discussion was going on at the beginning, I'm thinking, how did I come to 1500? Anyway, so 
I, I'll correct that again. That's why I said in my note, which was correct, the minimum investment you could do, which would get you a full box, not just two sides, would be more like 144 by uh, 48. But I really would like to do twice that because I think it would be better. But I completely understand if you want to start small, see how it goes. And if it's going guns a blazes, we could get some more fence. I, I really... Or you could hire a mower. I'm just here to say you need to maintain no, this well, land and it's a good depending investment. Depending on how that, I'm not familiar with that kind of fencing, but you can also, if you plan it out ahead, you can take it so they're through this area, but you've got your stakes ahead and you can move, ah. you can reuse the same fence and you can use it. Great so idea. if you have your permanent posts where Great you idea. fence it, then it just, it takes a couple of people and you're just moving the post. That's what we used yeah. to do with the sheep. But then that makes it very easy to back up and when go back through with an area to go back because the purpose is to constantly Correct. aggregate it down. Really. So you put them in a smaller area and really force them to eat it all down. Then you move them into another area and you just and you keep doing that. Yeah. It's basically you're doing a a rotational grazing system with not weed. And also the advantage of that is is in the smaller areas. It's parasite control for the animals because you don't leave them too long in an area. Animals will go back to eat what tastes best. So if you put them in a bigger area, you don't get as an ice and mow it down. Right. Okay. And that's from 15 years of rotational grazing with sheep <laughs> <laughs> and moving the damn fence. <laughs> but it yeah. makes complete sense. You know, and, and yeah. I really. <laughs> I just want to say, I know I'm bringing this to you. I cannot look after goats and I have a limited amount of time because I've got this other, you know, other not weed stuff. I, I would happily help Dan in whatever way, but he seems, he seems, and the only reason he's not here, by the way, I invited him to the meeting to do this, but I think he's on the fire um, thing. And I think they had a training or uh, yeah. a meeting or something tonight, but he would happily talk to you. Um, and, and answer any questions you have. But personally, I think it's, it's just a lovely idea. And I, it would be important to me that the fencing is nice and orderly and that we make a nice little attractive shed. Right. It looks and nice. it, it, it would be um, so much better. And it would also be a nice response to the fact that VTrans has, has not facilitated what we were trying to do at the site because part of the knot we was in the right of way. So we have, we will, respond to their um, rejection of what we wanted to do by bringing goats to the table and making it happen. <laughs> there, there, so. I'm going to call WCAX because they were talking about not meeting people down in Wakefield and I was yeah. very upset that yeah. you have not made the yes. yet because you've been working so hard in our little town. And well, well, let's get our goats lots. in. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's figure out what we're doing. Get well, that's right. Well, well, what's the goes. benefit to the community? Of this, yes. well, first of all, first the first thing is you will be um, taking care of property that the town owns and and has a responsibility to look after, um, and secondly, you will be um, demonstrating in a public way on town property that you can look at that invasive species exist and you can use livestock to control them, and thirdly, you'd be doing something that is aesthetically incredibly pleasing to an agriculturally connected community and, and responding to a, a problem, invasive plants, with something that's in the DNA of the community. Uh, I think it would be a nice thing to do. It, it, but it, it, it's, it's a year long, you know, it's- yeah, It takes a while to get it, but you could be fairly impressed with, I'm sure what boats could do. I know what she- I, I think that's probably amazing. right. It might but be a bit scary. But also we've been, you know, we've been working and there's concerted effort from the planning commission and trying to do things with North Hyde Park. And as that is, as they're looking at us, this is part of your gateway into North Hyde Park to have that turned into something over a period of a couple of years at relatively low cost and, and not a lot of maintenance to the to anybody except the goat guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. would, would really help. Well, like, that would help improve that. As you say, it's the aesthetics, but it's in their bigger plan of of making North Hyde Park more of a center and more things going on there. Yeah, I I, I personally like the idea, but, um, uh, and I had another thought, but I can't remember what it was. It was responding to what you were saying. I mean, clearly the goats will have to overwinter and Dan has said they will go there. Um, 
it may be that that we could also rearrange the earth that is there that's infested with knotweed and and encompass that into the um thing and i and can i think would be happy to extend the fence onto his to keep up um so there you have it and obviously i mean because you're, it's not dangerous to the goats they just they, they eat anything. Eat a row. <laughs> well, there's it's not just solid knotweed there. There is grass and there's multiflora rose. And I did I did send to you a, a uh, an article from a place in Massachusetts where they've done this. And um, I'm not quite sure how you know whether the the goats are being sufficiently nourished. I I'm I think I would. We could the owners of the goats will know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and it sounds like they were rescued from someplace that it, it wasn't medicinal much. values too. Dr. Farms sell them. They can't sell them when it's growing natural growth, but they sell them. They sell them. Not they really really they, well, it's the rhizome, the rhizome that they use. So it's there, right? Right, there you go. They Um, yeah, they end up with Right. Oh, that was the other thing. I know what it was that I wanted to say. That um, I think it would be a good idea if Dan was interested, and th this would be another question of expense. Is a, a, what Brian explained to me is the way to train the goats on the electric fence is you just put the electric fence inside the other right. fence, and then they will very quickly learn. And so if if Dan was interested in eventually training these goats for to be electrically sensitive, then this isn't maybe the interest of the town, but you could then take those goats with electric fence places in a much, you'd make this thing much more mobile and you could take them to that patch of knotweed on Centerville Road and Route 15 right in the village and them chew that down and then go, <laughs> I'm a little ahead of myself on this. Who <laughs> knows? I, I, anyway, it's, oh, these are weighty matters for you to consider. And it's very next, interesting. Next, we send her to the village for our money for goats and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> I happen to know that the village has many things it needs to spend its money on. <laughs> so, any questions? So, so the town won't be liable. And goats get out of there and get in the road. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's a it's a question that's again beyond my expertise. I don't really um, know what the um I was thinking about that with some stuff too or like you know, me? Thing. like a sign, like a, a kid was to get in the fence or signing would have to be put up as like goats or yeah, goats or could you rent the lands and Mr. Bernard for a dollar a year and have him make Accept the liability for the goats. It was probably better for us to accept that. Mm -hmm. That's why that kind of fencing is better than getting into electric fencing because it's also it's probably more predator proof than the electric fencing. Um, but you're right, kids are people seeing it. You know, people are going they're going to be attracted to go look at the goats. Right across the road. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. it, I'm sorry. Is that uh, excuse my ignorance? Is that a negative thing? I think that it would be a, a nice thing for the kids to be able to be connected. To, as long as a young kid didn't want to run over and go to the goat or something, you know. Right. Okay. Well, that like I said, that is a. a um, but this is a different question than you were asking, which is mm -hmm. if the goats run out into the road. Right. Still lies in the liability thing. Yeah. You know, when you when you first came on to, to being a committee member, what does somebody got hit in the road kind of like same thing? Liability, responsibility. I don't know how you check that out. Does does the we have risk managers that will right. tell us? Yeah. Okay. Well, obviously subject to it being a safe thing. Um well, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Very interesting. Okay. Appreciate your passion, by the way. I know. Me too. Gallery. Me too. How are you? Haven't seen you. Come well. Thank you. I'm I'm fighting the mosquitoes out here. <laughs> uh, so uh, before I start, did um, Al uh, Spitzer did he present earlier? There is. I have Al's handout. There's one page each. Oh. He sent two ideas in this afternoon. Okay. Okay. One so, is 
amended Guyane Valley Hall project list. Yep. Okay. The second one was buying the house on Route 100 Park. Okay. I know less about the house. Um, honestly, I'm, I'm new to the guy. Um, so I don't, I can't speak to that, but um, I'm guessing that the revised project list for the hall, just so you know, we did apply for the AARP Community Challenges Grant. Uh, and of the 3,500 people that applied for this grant, um, we were not one that was awarded. So and we had asked for some ADA compliant um, upgrades that were um, recommended by we had a the guy at the hall just before me the, the hall had the um, bill gallup do an accessibility life safety report in 2021 so um some of the basic things like the the ramp and um, so, um uh handrails widening the ramp installing fire rated doors uh, things like that. So I'm sure Al's list has all of that because he's been managing most of the uh, renovation project stuff. So, um, and I'll be honest, I'm a little confused about whether this would be town ARPA funds or the state ARPA funds um, for, a, for town um, building. So that's beyond me, but um, that was, I just wanted to, Represent the hall. No goats. <laughs> so it's, I have a neighbor here that you has goats, and I think they've been quite successful. Uh, they had there was a little patch of knotweed when they bought the house, and there isn't any knotweed anymore. Oh, no kidding. Where are you, Valerie? Where's your neighbor? Ebenezer Road. Okay. The Rainvilles have a house here. They have a couple goats. So I guess that was it. There's more goats in the town than I realized. So is there our state army money yeah. that's the meeting i went to yeah. okay yeah. so valerie's referring to this all of the state agencies have arpa money for town buildings and energy upgrades and art projects and recreation fields and libraries and everything else so whenever you decide to allocate some of the town resources um, the restrictions on the use of that don't interfere with the other sources. So a lot of times they say, can the town use its federal money to match another federal grant? A lot of times that's no. But there's an exception in the ARPA rules from the US Treasury that said you can. There would be a lot of exceptions for ARPA money. So they really wanted towns to put the money back out and have less constraint than usual. So what Chastity is mentioning is, once you have a project to find, there's a few boxes to check to make sure not 100% of Hyde Park money is being applied to a project when it was a 50 50 match if we have agency C in the state. To put some of their money in. Yeah. Or like the broadband is a 50 50 up to 100,000. Right. That's it's the same example. That's our point. I just want before I go off, I know that the the gateway signage conversation is coming up later, but is that uh, nothing new on that. We're just waiting for SAMO group to get back to us on a contract. Okay. Well, I'll let you go if you don't have any questions for me. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Valerie. Thanks, Valerie. Valerie. Hopefully we'll have some music going on there soon, and um, we're talking about bringing the uh, the haunted house back. Oh, nice! Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. <laughs>
Okay. So now what do we do? Oh. We, we do, and, and we ended up clear what they're actually asking for, how much money they're asking for, all of it. <laughs> I think the way he phrased it, it was almost like three projects. I, 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 see, yeah. I see three packages. There's a separate house. Yeah, there's a separate one for the house purchase. Yeah, right. And yeah. then there's kind of two packs of yeah, 75 on one, and maybe like not really sure on the other. Right. Yeah, it kind of matched the top paragraph of the right. Yeah, it looks like 75 and maybe 75. But the house is yeah, it's not like it's modified. They started 300 and now they fine tuned it somewhere. So I think that what they're doing is trying to say we asked for everything under the 300. If you're getting ready to prioritize, it's 150. Yeah, because the original the original was foundation, window, ceiling, fire escapes. Yeah, two fire escapes, insulation, and the boiler. Yeah. So, right. So now they've gone. We would like to propose to redo the ceiling of the first floor, do the repairs of the second floor ceiling, and do the wheelchair ramp and main set railings. Also, we need a rear engine store replaced with a good one we already have. It just needs to be adjusted and come. The cost of this is unknown as of now, but I'm thinking it's around 75. 75, right. And that's just, that's what they prioritized, right? Another repair package would be finishing yeah. up one building, 15K, a fire escape, second floor, maybe 75K, or it's finished up there, 20K, fixed up the kitchen, I think limited use, 10K, and foundation doesn't need anything right now. Maybe the board could do some of the above. I don't know. And then maybe by the house, it's feeling really nice. Yeah, right. And tear down the apartment. Right. Yeah, the, the price of that, um, the Griswold house is just the listed price. They didn't, you didn't add in all the pieces of it. We're tearing it down, mm -hmm. making the parking lot. We're keeping it apart for housing, baby, you know, that kind of stuff that you could do. Keep in time, the vote with Mary's going to get some goats, and we're going to make a parking lot over there eventually. And get five you know, Yep. There we go. And those can be trained to accompany you down the road. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing our goats. There you go. Hello. <laughs> the moon street light. Okay. How to make uh, order out of chaos. Yeah, that's why I'm still hanging around. I'm curious about that. Yeah. I mean, if you want us, if you want us to leave. No. You go. This is no. fine. No, 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 but we want to do we like hanging out with us. Well, well, the only thing I can tell you is that there's more, and I don't know, we're on the list of uh, applying for a grant from uh, for historic preservation, and I don't know if that would be pretty fast if we get it, um, and that we won't even have our application until October, um, but we're on the list, and we're talking thanks to Ron. About um, getting designation as a historic, unhistoric um, register. Also, so, more money. I've taken some steps since then. I think you've got it. That is really helpful. I was absent during the last meeting to oh. educate me. The church. She's representing the church. Representing the Second Congregational Church in Hyde Park and looking for um, money to repair the stained glass windows, uh, which are falling apart. They need to be re and uh, removed and re-leaded and put back in. We have significant rot around the window sills, and so that would be part of what we would be doing with that. And um, the third thing is a new roof. Uh, not a new roof, but repairing leaks in our roof. Um, we have a slate roof, so that is relatively expensive. There should have been a letter yeah. that you got. I did get that on the package. Yeah. 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 And, um, you know, the sills and the windows kind of go together. Um, we'd like to get the roof repaired. And we wouldn't be doing all the windows at once, and we're not asking the town for all the money to do the work. Right? Um, I think it would pay to like half a million or something, right? Pardon? Yes, yeah, sure, it was like half a million or something like that. No. So, 125. Yeah. Other request. And, um, or, or we realize that there are some concerns about us being a religious organization, but we are also a community 
um, resource and where the evacuation site for the elementary school should it need to be evacuated for any reason. We make the building available to the general public. We host things with the library, with the Royal Neighbors. We have a meetings there. So we, we are a community resource. And after what happened to the Catholic Church, I think there's a lot of concern that if we if we lose the iconic church in town, we really lose it to our history. So that's my pitch. <clears throat> Seven forty two is the total we're getting. And we've received yeah. all of it, correct? Yeah. About six hundred thousand left unobligated. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a chance that some of the obligated hundred fifty two could come back. So it needs to come back though before December twenty fourth. If it's going to come back, right. reality. Are any of these <laughs> bigger things? You know, the governor and his crew coming out and we have money, spend it, spend it, spend it. You know, are any of these major things eligible mm -hmm. for that? Yep. So, for example, the uh, HVAC for the four or five buildings, right? Yep. You have Highway Library, Town Office, yep. Guy and Valley Hall of Fire. There's a $500,000 grant per town under the energy study okay. stuff that at least Clancy started working on with the town energy. Okay. Yep. So that's the preliminary yep. assessment. That's step one, and then you go to an application and you compete for that money. Um, it's not going to go that far. I think their budget overall for the whole state is not going to get five hundred thousand every town. But the, the town energy committee does want to try for that, and at least want to put an energy assessments done because that's your first step on those buildings. Right. The um, town garage. Uh, we had the. Uh, Seventh Bay or Shed Storage Shed Edition on the left side. It's been a project for a while, and the voters haven't given us enough money for that. But we have been making repairs in the garage. And I talked to Mark French today a little bit about if it's sort of advocating for that project or not, because there's a there are needs at the highway facility. There possibly is some state money that could help because it's a municipal facility. Thinking salt water, salt shed type. Stuff that's focused on the environment, and it's, it's sort of gone dry. It's, it's the energy level has dropped on that. So I told us if that's still a real benefit to you guys, you need to be coming to these types of meetings. In particular, if it's four hundred thousand, five hundred thousand dollar addition, you only have six hundred thousand, right? And if there's no grants, is it even worth spending the time to scope that project out? So we started talking about all the different variations for the garage. So pole barns to cover the greater attached shed, heated shed, you know, room or bay, and then a bay that's fully functional with lifts repaired for the repair shop, which is where the final idea ended up was can we have a one bay dedicated to doing all the potential repairs on our trucks so we don't have to shop it down to somebody else just because they haven't been late, those kind of things. So None of that stuff has been scoped out. Do, do you, Mark, want to start with uh, a real, it's almost like a mechanical study, a you know, structural study to figure out what we're getting into by adding on us? The old garage was, I, I think, just made, it just happened. You know, a bunch of people got together and built the garage. Um, I'm not sure you could do that if they want it to be a full on repair OSHA's shop. You know, you have the drawings and show it to the fire marshal and do all that stuff. You can't do that with a pencil sketch as easy anymore. So, does the select board approve a uh, preliminary assessment of that bay, or do we just let it drop and come off this list? So, not only are projects being added, some are being <coughs> modified, some can be dropped. So, is this one that's 250000 on it? <laughs> Work bay and shed highway. Yes. Yeah. So I and again, I think there with all the other money that's floating around out there and helping municipalities, I think that's where you go looking for that kind of, you know, that kind of money. Um, 
and again, we don't have anything scoped out. We don't, you know, it's like. Mm -hmm. She said we didn't need, she didn't need 30,000 for the library. Correct. Correct. That's only 10. Yeah, 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 that's right. I'm trying to get to that. That's right. So can, can we, I'm trying to look at some of these things. Can we cross them all? I know. That's why that's what that's what I'm trying to do. Let's look at yeah. them. And I'm, I'm looking at the big ones, you know, rebuild church and made with new crosswalks. No, nope, we can get rid of that 500. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no, there's all kinds of places and ways that you could do that one. Love it. And then what Matt Matt would you or or what about the 400k for the Northside Park re revitalization? What's going on with that? So decentralized sewer, etc. Yes. So that would be if we get a plan, what it would cost to do it. Yeah, right? there's a whole gotcha. There's a whole another case. Yeah, there's a whole series of things. Decentralized sewer would be the stimulus for that whole economic development revitalization. That's two to three million dollars. Got it. So yeah. that may go beyond your ARPA life because we're just barely getting ready to start the yeah. first. Yeah. Of the so I don't. And again, there'll be that's the sort of thing that there is money out there for. There should be because the state's priority is right. village development and sewer. I think I think it's going to take too long to get the big number within yeah. the, like yeah. the ARPA. Yeah. And the projects have to be completed by when, Ron? Twenty six. They have to be obligated for the real project by December twenty fourth. Yeah. Not only can add them after December twenty fourth. Again, because I I I think. The airflow quality improvement, I think that's really important and that's something we need to do. But how do we find out if we can get that out of the larger state thing? And how do we move that, push them to get yeah. there? Well, that's we have a lot of them. Yeah, it's just putting time into it. So Lisa has a pretty, you know, state, state does things that are not a uh, check box. It's like, can you research your, you know, invoices for the last five years and summarize all your bills and how many windows you have and how many doors you have. You know, it's it's like a real energy okay. sauce. Yeah. Okay. So that's, yeah. I think she's, she went up to the $1,600 for a mail and she got approved for that on the window dresser program. Yep. 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 This other thing, I need help. You know, so that's, that's what I would have to send some resources to that from my from my day because there's really nobody the committee doesn't work on that i think they're down to two members now you know so it's not a, it's a resource thing for for staffing so if they were going to do that kind of grant the application would take you know 30 hours or something like that and then you wait for a while and then you'll have probably a contracted same thing after that so it's really just putting that time into it now right. to accelerate it get an answer and there's no guarantee that they're going to give you the money because you have to do right. the assessment first so but it's a, it's a good project to keep on here. It's a high priority project. The number could change. The dollar amount could change, but the project probably shouldn't change because we may need it for match. Right. Okay. So that, and that's the one, two, three, the garage interior airflow. That's the 200, right? Yeah. So when you look at this chart, you see the U.S. Treasury project numbers, one, two, three, four, all the way to 14. Mm -hmm. Those are real reportable projects that U.S. Treasury has a file because we have to file every April 30th what, what you're doing. Okay. With yep. So the question that assigned those numbers is on the federal form that says, have you obligated money to a project? What is the number? And you set it up that way so they can track it from year to year for the next you know, five to six years when they're doing their audit. The projects that don't have a U.S. Treasury project number are not obligated yet. When you do obligate them, we'll assign the number and carry on with the list. So if you're looking at numbers one through 14, you'd be deducting your prior obligation to that. See what I'm saying? So you see, you would you could do another number, but you'd want to talk to that project people and see. Right. So like the Gihon Valley, where you where there's 300,000, we can change that to 75. Yeah, well, probably 150. I think two seventy fives in his project. And then you have to decide on the house and put a zero there, and we're not going to buy a house or whatever, you know. So you right. okay. you would modify that because they haven't started yet. Once they start their project, which is after right. you obligate, then you get a little bit harder to pull money away. Sure, sure. But right now, that project in particular is a planning holder for that 
that to do something with the Gaia Valley Update. But whether you want to break it into three projects, like Al was seeming to do, or just break up the 300 into 150, 75 each, or whatever, I'll do the math later. Right. We right. can break that up from 300 into 275s. And then I don't know if you want to buy a house. People have mentioned the house as an option for the park that's sort of central to the village. Yeah. But and I, I think Matt Reed looked at the house and he said there's no renovation here. So it's really a demo lot for 130. That garage would be all right. Yeah, there might be some saving grace right. thing. That's all steel. Yeah, I mean, kick it once in a while and see what happens to it. But yeah, we could. But the, it has a lot of frontage on the river, which is a bonus. You know, direct direct access to 100. Sort of like the Gamble property, but three times as big, I guess. So I, I can at least break it up into those two, because I think Al's you know, seeing the light that he needs to come to something, something more manageable than just we want to do it all under ARPA, take half the money from all these other funding. Is there a renovation plan? Is there something that came out of the, the you know, the, the map they're following or not really? For the, for the hall? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they could probably start in 2000. No, I just mean a written document. Yeah, 2019, they developed a big list with consultants that right. went to the voters two years in a row and got some money and they're at the point of revising the progress. Yeah, okay. it was like four, four of their, their total votes, like something huge, right? Uh, well, what was your, your question? He was here the other day, or the last one, Al was here. He was saying that his total, the final rebuild would be like 480 or something like that. He was saying, yeah, it was good, but yeah. Yeah, we were. If they were going to ask for it all, you know, what you said today was, I know we're right. not going to get that. Right. right. Can you guys not even get you guys close. focus on some real money that we might change? Right. Yeah. Back to what she was right. saying. I mean, right. he was talking about the theater and the heat track for as And they had yeah. this all against. Yes. <laughs> so, Ron, is the, the obligated amount is not obviously the same as the budget amount. Does that mean that you're planning on some of these that are under the budget to grant the full budget? Or are you done with those? Uh, some of those, yeah, some of these projects are done, uh, but most are in process. You know, but I mean, no, what she's saying, Ron, is like, for example, the fire department district one budget was 75,000. We obligated 32. So we've only approved 32. Are, are, we, are they going to come back and revisit and ask for more? That's, a, that's yeah. the implication. And you yeah. only, only obligated $926 to. Um, the Geekon Hall, according to this, yeah, but they're requesting, yeah, it's the same story. So, as these groups come in, some of them are like, I need it all done today, and then they get to reality. We got a million dollars worth of requests, yeah, right, or, right. There was a little something that they so needed to take care of, right? Ask, trying to figure out how big the pot is, but there's, yeah, there's no, there's no way. Okay. It's too yeah. early, I think. Once the obligations and expenditures start, so we have expenditures that are starting, right? So once those expenditures happen and those obligation months are either unused or like the shed question, are you going to use all the 6,500 or are you going to send some of that back? Right. Yeah. That's what yeah. We're, we're in that yeah. process now. Yeah. yeah. And like Susan said, if there's leverage of other grant programs, can we pull those in to save money? So there's a lot of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. If you figure it out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have more magical skill than money. <laughs> but there's so many people involved with this stuff that it's just it's hard. Yeah. And then the state is involved in our day and will help too. So I'm going to get that. You know, I'm glad this plot. Yeah, the village is going to be part of the plot. Right? And sometimes, like Stowe, Morristown, and the plot is not a good thing right now, though. There's only so many people in the state to build so much stuff. Right. So oh, that's yeah. true. Yeah. some of the some we're of seeing the, it on the on the on the construction side of things. That's so many right. towns are trying to spend the money. Because of that, mm -hmm. many towns are I call it washing their ARPA money, which is not a good term, but the ARPA so, money came in with all these strings on it. And then they cleaned that up and made it easy in the final rule. Mm -hmm. And now they're saying you only have so much time. And some towns are paying, you know, using hard for against their current expenses. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, that's that, bad. That's what I mentioned to you guys the other day. That if this doesn't get spent, then we allocate you it. almost have to be you saved. Care. Found that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then by 1224, you'll have a really good number. 
you know, in a year and a half, they'll really be able to answer your question. But hopefully your project's obligated and you're happy and all that stuff. But um, even after this, if that does have to happen, then in March town meeting day, huge unassigned fund balance, way more than our 20% that you're supposed to keep in the slush fund. You go to the voters and say, we need to we need to do something with this. And you move it to reserves or you fight projects or you you do this all over again through that process, but you need to do something with ARPA first. Either spend it obligated or use current gives current expenses. Well, when, how how does everybody feel about the the uh, the fifty thousand dollar request for the for the fiber? I think that that's a good one, and partic particularly because they're getting the match from the state. Yeah. Right. I think we're close to Cambridge in size, and I see the Cambridge asking twenty five. Five. Yeah. I. I look at our funds as how is it going to reach the most people in our town mm -hmm. and the benefiting the bang for the buck. So to give them 10% or what well, we'll say 7%. Ah, struggle with it a little bit. It's realistically going to get to at most. But the good thing is wait, wait. 15 people in this town. Well, it all well, starts going into a pool that becomes part of the bigger thing and and the the this fiber stuff is sort of so, and there's so many numbers being thrown around, and there's so much, there's so there's state dollars and federal dollars, and you match for this, and then you're gonna, and they go, you. And again, by the time it gets built out, it's almost old technology. I'm dealing with this at work. I do this for a living. I hold the heart of a company who who lays fiber, so I get it. I understand the money. I like it. It's great, but it's also, I hate spending other people's money. So, Starlink. Is this is the next wave of technology? It is amazing. I just picked this up at work for five hundred dollars. I had the fastest internet, and where a place had zero phone service, zero internet, and it's it, and it's I put my phone to the sky, grabbed from the satellite, and I have I have internet. It's, it's expensive. It's expensive. Thousand fifty nine ninety. I think seven or ninety. Mm -hmm. yeah. How much? Nine. You have the purchase device. It cost me six hundred dollars to purchase. Yeah. <laughs> And then, that. and it's not me. So I, I was spending one ten. You might want to check it. Yeah. yeah. No, so I was spending one ten, and then people, because we have enough people in our area, it, they drop it down. And, and, yeah, and they get forty dollar, a forty dollar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no, I have not But 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 oh, you back to back to the being expensive thing. And I know they said that they're going to keep the bills, but if they sell this off to consult, uh, consolidated communications. There's there's not a person in this world right now that will tell you that consolidated communications was good customer service or their bills AG. Mm -hmm. So that's what scares me when they're selling us off to private entities that yeah. do not really care about the people. You're not really they say they care right now. Yes. Yeah. And that's yep. again well, all about serving the people that are where Mary lives. I mean, I, Mary, I, Mary I, lives. I know. Yeah. yeah. No, not Cooper, McKenna Street. Yeah, well, McKenna Street. Cooper Hill. Yes, but Cooper Hill, which. I, okay. So let me show with this one because they're on a the timeline and they're going to send a letter. So we need to commit. So what we're going to do for them is going to do, we need to commit tonight and that will be a commitment. And if you want to do 25, anybody, any, I mean, where are people? I'm a, I'd be fine with 25. And you're right, you know, looking at other towns of Denver. Yeah. Like <laughs> I mean, I, I, I look at the cost of community, and that's what the communities are giving. I, I, I don't want to be so arrogant to say that I can give nothing, you know, but it's, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'd argue, I'd argue over nothing. I would say, yeah, so, right. so <laughs> don't split nothing in 50 and come up with 25. I, I look, again, I look at our communities and say that, hey, we're close to Cambridge, I'd say we're pretty, yeah. we, we line up with Cambridge. Okay, so we want to, and I don't, we, you know, we want this is as a motion. Do we need to? Yeah, you sign up the letter of support for the twenty five thousand, yeah. so they can do whatever yeah. they need to do on their end. Yeah, so that's what I need is a motion that we when we sign a letter for the twenty five. No move. Second. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay.
Yeah. What about decision. what about Amy Sewer? I was going to say I so recommend it. I recommend it. Well, I should do it right now. Before that's what happens again. That's, that's what I'm thinking. And Particularly since a lot of them getting served going there and everything. I was you're probably spending. What did you know? What she's spending when it backs up? I mean. Yeah, I mean like three, four thousand dollars. Yeah. 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 That's, I mean, it's going to help her not worry. Time. Well, that, that's right. Every time you're worried. Same thing that happened here. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Huh? I, and I was going to say, I mean, the monster's ten thousand dollars goal. I, I'm, I've done a lot. Of, I, we, I rebuilt a lot of areas. My company did. They ran around thirty three hundred bucks when I did. Like when we rebuilt the street, we did from service entrance to yeah. and they were around between thirty three and thirty eight hundred bucks. It's four inch sewer, SPR. I would guys did. I would even say probably eleven hundred dollars cost is probably yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, so we can give her a which she doesn't spend. No, I'd yeah. say it's a town property. You could authorize highway to spend a couple days on it. Oh, okay. well, it's the same. It's the same issue here. They're going to be yeah. sewer repair people. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, I was going to say, I don't know that that's a good use of their time. A lot of, a lot of times call the highway crew every time. <laughs> they, don't, they don't like it much. Yeah, yeah. The, um, the responsibility of them having a sidewalk or something in the village. I think we're going to cut it out. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'm saying. Okay. Oh, no, that's the good idea. Yeah, that, that, well, let's just, just do I, up to 10000 Yeah, and yeah, she said enough. if it's... She, it's going give to the money back. I mean, you can obligate it, but right. So they should pull my stuff. Um, well, there's no, there's no uh, contract with Manash. You just give her a quote, so she can get another quote. Yeah, that's Absolutely. what I was saying. I, I would like to see three quotes. Oh, something okay. to that effect. You know, I, you know, I think we need to see the quotes. No, exactly. We like to see her get. Oh, okay. Quotes, I mean, like, she needs to get it all managed. She was, no. she was just scrambling the Correct. thing. Yeah, we can't we can't obligate money to go to a private contractor and just say yeah that's my buddy and give ten thousand dollars to meter chess. Yeah. Okay, so you want to get in touch with Amy tomorrow and let her know that. So the motion to be made or just conversation? Yeah, if you're obligating up to ten, these can be all batched together. If you, I don't think they both are personal. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. do. But why? Yeah, why don't we batch them together? That's going to be easier. Okay. Well, it's not a bid. It's just a budget number. I don't think it's a bid. That's yeah, what I'm yeah. This it's is good, right. It's good for you know when we start going. I am a contractor, so it, if we're spending town money. We do have to get. We did. We did the same thing with her. We asked them to get a couple numbers on the check. It's yeah, yeah. It's no good. Right. No, and I'm sure she and said you just scrambling to get something for it. And she did a great job. Get a yeah. couple quotes and a couple numbers. Yeah, we're trying to be no problem. Okay. Okay. We um so what do you want to do with goats? Are you looking at me? Because you're making the decisions. What do you want? What do you want to do on this one? I didn't make any decisions. <laughs> what do you want to do? <laughs> okay. I I think I think it's you want to go to the idea. For, for no, that's well, why, why don't you tell me what you want to do? I don't, I want, okay. I think it's a great idea. I, I think it's an excellent idea. It's think it's what, yeah, that's right. It's, um, uh, it, well, and it's also, it's, it's a positive response to a community that's really working. And here's somebody's, you know, this fellow is willing to step up to the plate. And do Should you look at the liability first? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah you check out. Any right. project do that. Okay. Then you got your math right. You sure? Got the number. Well, I think there's more though. So the, the fencing is part of it. Maybe a slight repair to that shed, goat shed. So well, but you said right. labor was uh, free. There might be a little bit of a so serious. Twenty five hundred bucks to make it round. How much did you say? Twenty five hundred. <laughs> but you're just not lying that, right? And then you can go up to up to up to the right? up to up to okay. But I'd say we start small, see how it goes, and then perhaps add some fence. You all thought you they also have a line in a budget too. She has she has I mean, 500 in my budget allocated to that, right? So allocated to that property, no. allocated to goats. The oh, 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 gotcha, okay. gotcha, gotcha. Okay, this is for the structural stuff. Is that are they on this list? Somewhere? No, no, okay, yeah, no, they're under goats. 
<laughs> but subject to Ron checking out the liability, yeah, yeah, liability stuff, right? Right. right. But that's no, not. So, so what do you think? Number you want to pick? 15, 15 25? What do you want to do for another eight? <laughs> yeah, I think 25 because it's fencing and fixing the shed, right? Uh, yeah, because they need to shelter, right? Because they need safe the water pump or something. It's just you unknown. Oh, that's why I'm saying 20. You're doing the bare bones fence, but there's going to be other right. things. If he's got a battery powered pump that he can get some water from the river, we need a vessel to put the water in. Uh, and vessels are not major items. So what, what's okay. We'll, we'll just go up to don't talk yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, if you don't, if you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Up to 25. Right. Ending I want to see if the Lamoille County players get money out of the village because the village should pick up that bill. I agree. One way or the other. It's a village property. Okay. Um, what else looking on here do people want to take a run at? But, you know, because we talked with the emergency, uh, I'm looking down close to the bottom, Sterling View Community Center, emergency shelter. Oh, yeah. I'm just, I'm just sort of pulling things out and say for conversation. Would be you're going to try the village too, right? Are you trying the village? Yeah, she just learned everybody's just learning yeah. about the village yeah. money, which again, they may have already totally obligated and haven't told anybody about yeah. it, but you might as well just find out what they're doing with it. Could I ask that we go start from the top and work our way down? Just no, that's not how we do it. No, that's not. <laughs> 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 yeah, see, that's what you're going to do. It sort of started. So yeah, we did start. Yeah, that's that's right okay. So what well, what what do we want to do with the Gihon Valley? Okay, we got they they're in here at 300. We want to go to 150 to do the two packages. Does the other is the other package 75 as well? I guess yes. look like that added up a lot more to me. Okay. No, he broke it down to 75 and 75. And then he's asking for the building, so it's built at 350 for the request, essentially, right? Okay, the 133 is this. Third project, which is buying the house close to 75 75. But I think you had a great idea because you said there's not fees included in closing costs, and, right? Yes, the address, no, nothing. that's a very oh, yeah. yeah. price. Yes, yeah. forget the house. Yeah. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> so, so that line that is, is at, right at 300, put 170, 150. Yeah. You're just changing the budget number. Not yeah. Budget. That's right. right. But you agree with their downsizing, is what you're saying. Yeah. It's the three hundred. Um, Lamoille Community House. Well, that was they asked all the towns that that's when they were looking for a permanent place and and then maybe building and a variety of things. They asked they sent a letter to every town asking mm -hmm. for some of the of the ARPA money. I've seen that 14,800. I think, I think what the, I think they did sort of on population in the time. Yes, so. Yeah, they came up with some kind of formula. Oh, oh that's right. I remember now. It was yeah. per person. Yeah. That's a project from Bro. But they don't. And they're going to they're gonna get some for every community. Yeah, yeah, they were formula. They well, I well, don't know anybody to say fast. I don't know that anybody's <laughs> giving anything, right? Hey, um, no, I don't want to give them that. <laughs> well, we have to right now. We can we can put in nothing. I mean, and you see, we didn't we didn't. Well, yeah, put, I mean, it's a request that hasn't been denied yet, but it hasn't been approved either. 
which is a pending request. You want to deny it because the whole project changed and they're going through permitting and get a whole bunch of three point five million dollar grant. And they got another big grant yesterday, so they're yeah, they're, 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 they've they've right. changed a lot since this request went into all the towns. You yeah. know, so probably should give it something, but I mean, you know, I can ask her for a letter too. If you, if you want to do it that way, you just say, oh, hey, good idea, Ron. Just yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, it has. It's changed. Yeah, they've changed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we got the uh, oops. I'm down. I'm 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 trying to I'm trying to keep our staff are happy here. Going down the uh, the old state garage for parking. Hundred thousand. I, I think uh, the water in the town. Really do do that. Is that the property that's directly across from the like Yeah. Is that where Ken, what's his name, stored it? Doc? Just down the right arm. Ken Dukes was going to say, this is the same purchase. That's reasonable, right? This is a different purchase. This is? Yeah, this is on the right. I don't is know. Is it the one? Wow. It's Ken Dukes. Ken Dukes, so. that's the name. That's where he used yeah, to. Yeah, have the bulldog out front. Okay. The one that's just there's, two, well, there's two parts yeah. of it, right? Wait, there's Duso's property, which is sold to so the person, and then there's the state garage property, which is across in Gamble, which the fire district and the one owns. And they the state they allow storage. The state, yep, yep, the state yep. built it, sold it to the town for a dollar. I know what it is now, right? The town sold it to the water district for a dollar, and they're thinking about maybe get rid of it again, but it's restricted by E to community use. So you can't sell it for commercial use. Oh, so we couldn't use it for parking. No, community, community, community use. use. Oh, oh yeah, wait, yes. but who, who, we own it? No, fire district. The fire own. district owns it. They're, they're they bought it for a dollar from the select board. Okay, so why don't we buy it back for two? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I know what's the big, big, big trend there. <laughs> well, they don't have the money. <laughs> but um, if you would have to come in. The potential committee would come here to talk to us. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, what, that's what yeah. would happen next if you're interested in talking to them. But yeah, there's two or three active members. Yeah, I'm not at that amount of money, but why, why, why do they want to get rid of it? Well, they're, they're using it for multiple people the village of Hyde Park Electric, North Hyde Park Eden Fire Department, and some of their stuff. And just it's like cold storage, and they're they don't see a long term need for it for their purposes. But you looked at the building for that storage shed up there, yeah. And they wouldn't put stuff in there. Building, the building is no good. The building is no good. I don't think there's much. Well, I don't want to say what the it's fire department said. No, it's there. It's the officer. So it'd be better just to buy it and tear it down. I'm, I'm, I give them $2 to double their money. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> no, no, have 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 them have them come in and talk to us. Yeah. And yeah. explain why just, we should spend that of, amount of money. A little facts at this point. Right. Right. Uh, we don't have it all. Okay. That was How many acres is it? Not much. It's, it might be, might be one. Yeah, it's about that. Is it one acre? Close. Probably three falls. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They should come in and talk to it. Yeah. Uh, okay. The engine. Oh, North High Park sidewalks. No, yeah. 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 gonna fly sometimes. Was that rolling? I said that has got to fly sometimes. <laughs> You'd think we're they got turned they got turned down the last. So week, you right? approved to apply for a scoping study. Yeah. Two three meetings ago, the application due June 9th. Yeah. Okay. To bring forward the ideas. Uh, concept plans that were done in 2016 by New Boy King from Heath Road, the Route 100 to the bridge, to the bridge. Johnson. So they covered okay. that whole area. A lot of the work has been done. What hasn't been done is the next step, which is sort of like preliminary engineering to figure out what you're really into if you want to build that stuff. So the grant that's going to go in is to make that to the next step, eventually 80 20 grant. Right, it would be to do that plan. And we have enough money in the sidewalk pedestrian reserve to pay the 20%. So the ARPA 
may not be the best use of that. I, I was going to say, right, they don't need that. We've got another way to do it, right? Yeah. Okay. So if you want to get rid of that, you could say Scratch that one. <laughs> okay. I just say use other funds. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that one's gone. Yep. Yeah, not gone from the to do list, but gone from our budget. Right. 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 Okay. Okay. No, it's 50. The 400, I think we already got rid of. Yeah. Yeah. We got the other 400. Yeah. Sorry. No, I'm okay. Susan said no, we're afraid of walking out. She's not going to start the job. Nope. Out of here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we we'll take the improve the rail trail parking area. Which one? The one down off Depot Street? Yeah, that's the only yeah, parking the area only we get. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. They, and that's still, I was thinking of the one down here. That's still going to be this on the state land, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is more of some batch money if we need it, but I don't state really. Uh, the state's not doing any of that in the state. They let the towns do it with permission. Like, yeah, because we just we just applied for the grant. To yeah, we're gonna do a set We're thing. gonna do a study of the whole area there for amenities. Oh, so we're just gonna apply for the grant, which we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah we've done. That's what we can study now. This yeah. is more for the construction of it later. Right. But you can take this one off. Yeah, because this is also eligible for that sidewalk. Sidewalk. Yeah. Well, yeah. Reserve yeah. One. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you're just you're making choices on moving money around basically because yeah. you have more yeah. money than you. No, no, do this. Yeah. It's hard to do. It's hard. Well, if they said we don't want to do a special project, so you have a lot of money to spend. But so the the next, really, the next three. Have we gotten some of that? How much again with Kim and getting so much scanned and put online? Yeah. You're skipping Susan, you're skipping the storm water and hydro. We are at already crossed. No, that yeah, that's gone. Oh, that's yeah. gone. That's gone. 20 minutes ago. Yeah, that's, that's gone. Uh, that's what we objected. We said before. Right, that's, okay. Jumping. So Kim has put these on hold because conditions medical. She needs to do it. But does she need to do it? She wants to do it. Okay. I don't know if Krista has any history with it or if gotcha. Kim's even asked for help to do it or if you guys could ask Krista if she can take it and Kim can maybe work on it. I don't, I don't know. The, I don't know. What it is. Okay. Originally it was quoted and then it was a yeah. scheduling thing almost and I don't know what happened there, but that's more of a question for them. For Kim? Yeah. Okay. Kim slash Krista. And that's on the 50,000? Well, it's, it's all, it's the seven, the 50 and the 10. Right, so it's a five hundred thousand. That one's crossed off. Gone. <laughs> when it gives me that many numbers, gone. <laughs> <laughs> there must be other places to find that kind of money. Yeah. So back uh, the ten, I'm going to look at just quickly here. So the communication upgrades, move more town services online, is really a website upgrade which we have, which is not Kim. That's everybody okay. working together. And that would be um, start talking to Don Don Archibald about she's a web designer person. Okay, just yep. to see what she thinks. And she's there's all sorts of things out there that we don't have access to off the town website now. Okay. Including formatting that looks like every other website. So I mean, you go to the Hyde Park website after looking at other websites and you're almost lost because it looks like some archaic system and it's really not that old, but it's homegrown. Most agencies are having sure. Well, that's, I think that's from Elisa's perspective. She thought it would be good to have this bulletin board type feel to it. But most towns have gone to more automated interactive stuff, which, which is sometimes more useful because you can ask questions or you can get stuff really quickly by, you know, hovering and clicking instead of, anyway. So that's that 10,000. I would keep that for now just to start okay. talking about okay. whether or not we're going to ask for so we'll, yeah, it's a pleasure. Well, I, I think the other will just ask for Kim and yeah, if she Kim's can do it. it. If not, yep. then can she come in nights and do it? I mean, again, that's the sort of thing that, oh, you know. Okay. You, we need to, yeah, yeah no one's the scope is yet. So that's, okay. I think it's all contracted out, but I don't know how much they want some staff here for that when they do show up. Hang my head on the floor. Uh... The cemeteries. 
repair and replace the mandatory fencing and rule signage. I had a meeting with the cemetery commissioners last week and they are <laughs> they're looking at their overall operating costs. They have yep. 22,500 every year, basically, plus or minus 500 bucks that they get from the taxpayers. And they get revenue that we don't see necessarily from the sale of grave sites or plots or lots or whatever you call it. And they use all of those funds to run the maintenance and the mowing and repair gate or whatever, or buy dirt to fill a sunken grave. We don't see necessarily all the details of all that stuff because they're not run through the town system. So I, when we were meeting, I said, if you have expenses that look like 22,500 to the taxpayers, but they're really 45,000, we probably should start to do that. And she said, or they said, it was like, yeah, ever since we had to take on the extra cemeteries. So they used to take care of three or four cemeteries and then the seven volunteer cemetery commissions that were private started turning over cemeteries. I think within one year, the commission acquired three cemeteries. Yep. So now they do six and they haven't really adjusted the 22. So I don't know if that means they're dipping more into their sales or other resources they have, but we're trying to get that all collected so that when the fall comes and they say, here's our real budget, here's our real revenue that we can get that better in line so the taxpayers can help them do their work. In the interim, they have an ARPA request because there is fencing needs that they can't necessarily cover with their 22.5. So they're hoping to fix that up and try to work out some repairs there. I don't know if they've gone as far as a cost estimate or if they have somebody in mind. I don't you know how far they are, but I can do the same thing with the Homewell Community House. You know, if we have a specific request or a timeline. Okay. But that would help. I would leave that 20 there. Yes. It's a good placeholder anyway. Okay, going to see, I tried to start stop at the start at the bottom, but you wouldn't let me. So now I'm back at the bottom. The Sterling View Community Center, when they came in and talking about, um, you know, that being an emergency shelter, what they needed to upgrade and do that. It, <laughs> that was to get a generator, right? It, it, was a, it was a variety of things, Ron. Do you remember what it was besides that? I think it was more than the generator. Generator was the biggest thing. I yep. think they wanted to get some supplies, you know, a few cops, maybe, maybe, I don't know if they're oh, yeah, or yeah. just some really emergency, yeah. not a huge hundred bed thing, but just enough where they could get a corner of their place <laughs> to their store of five, six, seven, eight people. It wasn't a, it wasn't a master plan for I part. Of it. But most of the time, the last 13 years anyway, the emergencies have been very short, very limited to two or three people that have special needs. Yep. It hasn't been a big, big thing for them down here. Oh, yeah. yeah so I think so. One, one unit has a problem, they can go there. You know, yep. right. So yep. it's not a big scope of the damage. They're supposed to go meet right. with Red Cross and come up with a list. I yep. haven't seen that yet. Yeah. So that's an ending. Yeah. I think certainly I need to leave that to one exactly. Right. So what are you doing with that one? Leaving the 20. Okay. Well, well, fiber is 25 now. Now, I was waiting for Matt to pick up on this one. Oh, so I asked him talking, we had lots of conversations about a community center and the whole thing. And I really, I believe looking, again, this is with some of this stuff, it's the opportunity to really look way forward. And ultimately, having that kind of a facility in Hyde Park, I think, would be a tremendous benefit to the community. But to believe that you or a group or any of us are going to come up with the, what it takes to really scope it out, look for properties, here's what it costs, here's what it does, it's not happen. <laughs> you know, it's just, or, you know, your great-grandchildren might get around to it. So Ron and I talking, this, is, this number got pulled from Ron's great experience. <laughs> to say here's what it to put aside to hire a, a company or firm that does this sort of thing to come into Hyde Park, check out the whole thing, scope it out, look at possible properties, come up with a plan for doing it. Here, I have a card for you. <laughs> does um, does Sandlot do anything like this? They were the people that built the festival. So, and they are specialists in building wise. 
and recreation yeah. facilities. Yeah, that's what I say. We aren't even at a point of looking, but it's like, do we want to put aside the money to have pay somebody yeah. to do I mean, I'm just saying that they might be willing to put Yeah, yeah. Well, I, again, I just, I just, we could just easily put 20,000. I meant to think She's cute. Beth says that she thinks that she can get down to the map. And that would be SDA. Oh, for, for planning to do with that sort of a thing? I bet. And you are? M A R. M A R. Thank you. Yeah. I just need a rich community member to leave me a piece of property when they pass. Did everyone hear that? <laughs> Yeah, but if they're if they're rich and they're younger, you know, do you want to wait that long? No, uh, if they're supposed to be rich and generous, yeah. I need that as well. Well, but but the thing is, if you hire somebody to go do that, they'll they'll help you find that person. Off topic, we had our first one around county little league hosted tournament statewide up there. So it'll be this weekend, and it went really well. Excellent. Great. Great okay. reviews. So to a statewide. You have grand battle teams there. No way. Come back next year. Well, it will be huge next year. I think we have 20 something teams. Wow. Huge. It's Did you get I was going to say, it's been straight up. Like, 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 wish you had one more thing. Did you yeah. put the nail it? Or, uh, it was a, it was a learning experience. Uh, but it was cool too. We had this mean, yeah. put it this way the parking got tight down there. Yeah. It was that big. That's, wow. That's, that's great. great. Up well, but think while we're thinking if there's another, you know, we took care of the bike. Don't go there, you want money for parking. Oh, I'm going to put them down the pit, but what the hell? That is, yeah, what's that? Um, and shower is we can't, yeah, but we'll get there. There is there, there's a whole other step part of that scoping could be, but I mean, our fields do need to get moved, so there's that whole yeah. scoping process could be involved in that as well. I just got so, an email from uh, Gregor Engineering. So I had asked them in November for a budget number to do a full analysis of the existing gravel pit, what's what's yep. what's been excavated, what hasn't been, you know, so true up the 1990 report, you mm -hmm. know, basically 40 years later almost. Never had any of Started giving deadlines from town meeting day. It's really good if we can at least tell people at town meeting day what we're into. Is it $5,000 update because they have all the engineering? Is it $50,000 because you're going to start all over? And today, after sending more emails and phone calls, and they were, well, you know, if you can find somebody else, because I don't know if they're having staffing issues like everybody else or what, but they're very. What's that? Just, you said, so they're the original engineer. <laughs> yeah. Company. Yep. So, my desk upstairs is fine company contractor for gravel pit because I think we need to move that to somebody. And he's cool with that. He said he turned over all his own documents, which might not be worth that much anyway at this point. But so we might have, I, I think I'm just going to send out a quick RFP to a few firms and see if anybody wants to help yeah. move that yeah. forward. That is, that is a, that's not a good sign. Grenier Engineering, Green Mountain Engineering. Like you're finding laborers and having professional people that are not able to serve anymore. So. Okay. So what do we what do we want to leave for a number there? We need that much? Can that be 40? I just I got we're having we had a cost estimate done to evaluate the dam that you all just bought on uh, Centerville Road. 45,000. It's a half acre. Yeah. Cost us meant to what? Evaluate to evaluate it only, not to come up with any construction, just to evaluate it and come up with recommendations. Well, of course, of course, dams are not uh, yeah. We, we, uh, 60 might be lighting, so I'm saying, but 60, I'm good with. Okay. We just got awarded the dam project yesterday. Okay. It's, uh, it just came through being the business part of this. Yeah. Gillette Dam, I think it was. Gillette Dam in Richmond. Yeah. Project going to be in seven hundred seven thousand. And that thing is about about the same, same like, like almost identical to Yeah, well, no. they're different. This is a that's a stone. This is a yeah. concrete dam. So they're they're same length. Same they're making it concrete. Yeah. Funny thing, they're almost exactly the same distance from Tom Fulmer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
So the dam is there, like See, 45 feet away is a road. And you guys have worked, so you, you just started into a neighborhood. Yeah, Centerville just charges this, but what is the bigger one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's on ledge too. It's true. You know, you've got ledge and Oh, yeah. Okay, what do we want to do with the request from the church? You guys still have the list of whip, whippies here to tell us if we want here what the different thing costs. Yeah, I have that. Yeah. Um, um, was thirty-two, and the windows and the sills, roughly a hundred k, right? Yep. Okay. And that. That's part of the windows, not all of them. And you're still waiting to hear, hopefully, on the historic grant, maybe. Well, we haven't even applied for it yet. And the maximum mm -hmm. we get for that, if we get it, would be 20000 Okay. And and that windows and sills is not all the windows and sills. It's doing one part of the windows. Okay. The total windows were... Well, the total yeah. windows were $100,000. I was going to say, I thought that was the hundred ten. Mm -hmm. But that was like you break it down. I, I've got to get yeah. here. Can we, like, if, um, if she's going to check with the village, can we redo our mat here and see? Because if we're already out, what's the point of yeah. keeping it on the list? Well, I'm thinking the point of moving. 32,000 for the roof. I think it would be too close. Um, 43,000 mm -hmm. for the rock issues in the window. And 50 for the windows. How much for the window? 50. 50. 50. That would do part of the windows, right? 311. That would be the east, the east windows, which are the ones that face the right. Oh, the governor's mansion. Yeah. Okay. They're one of the, the big ones. Yeah, they're the great big windows. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now how much have we committed? I know she's rough enough. Oh, it's it. <laughs> she's out of <laughs> He's always keeps such good track of everything here. I thought he just already had a running total there for us. So he still does play for the grant. Oh yeah. yeah, we still have to. I mean, they aren't even going to put out the RFP until August. Okay. The application is due in in October, and uh, I don't know if board. I'm so keeping up in the year. Very critical issues with the yeah. building, like uh, leaky, broken, and all that kind of stuff. Well, the roof, I think. The roof is serious. <laughs> the roof is serious. Yeah, yeah. the roof is serious. And um, we could completely redo the roof. Two hundred thousand. Yeah, we're excited. Seven, 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 well, I mean, I'm sure eventually if that's good, you know, it's going to be right. Yeah, right now, did you do the child priority? You're going to say, did you do the 300 then? No, no, okay. Yeah, cool. So we're all still at a million, and I haven't even got down to the 60,000 for the community scoping study. Well, you got the 300 just now. Oh, wait, wait. wait. Did you do the 250? Yep. You shouldn't have. Sorry. Okay. Minus 250. So we're back to 700. And then plus the bottom two. And then add the 60. Right. Is 759. And then the 200 for the HVAC. We don't know what's happening with that. We're just leaving it there because. Okay. So right now with the sixty thousand, oh, and my goat, the goats. <laughs> oh yeah, we're at goats. seven sixty two. Oh, no. so twenty grand over. We I didn't know this. So this was just quick, right. like right, right. So well, how far down the list did you get? All the way to sixty thousand, just above the church. Right. Okay. Well, that's a little over. Mm -hmm. We're over. no. No, I just did the budget calling. So we have 742. 
and we're at 762. So we'd be 20,000 over right now without even the last two. Yeah, items. and you included the community house, and we're not sure about that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you included the, you know, me and the stuff with Kim. We're not yeah. sure about all that. Yeah. Okay, so I can take so, that out. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's kind of a question. Do you mind if I come over there and compare with you guys? Sure. No, I don't mind. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> if you took out the community house, and... I think my work here is done. I think it is too. <laughs> very congratulations. Is that 150? Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate everything you guys. Yeah, have. we're getting a new letter on that. We may work. My bedtime is close to 8:30. We can right. <laughs> <laughs> well, do petting goats. We we cross those out. The bay on the garage. And so we're going to have them come talk to us. That's what Susan wants to buy for $2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. So I'm taking, consider, like, I'm taking that out, but I don't really know if that's what we yeah. officially want to do, but to get to the, to have another number to talk about it. And then 457. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Thank you. And then the 2,500 line for the goats, which is added. Right. Don't forget it though. She was asking for some tonight for the playhouse, right? She's gonna well that was ten thousand, but the village can pay for that one way or the other. The village owns that piece of property, they can yeah. pay for it. They can take ten thousand. But if they don't build them, them, we should yeah. Yeah, I would give it to them, but don't give them let, don't let the village here say that. <laughs> they just did. Right. I'm gonna <laughs> yeah, no. mm -hmm. So, no, what I was right. yeah. but, but that's your no, right. that's, that's not on this list. I'm adding it back on or adding it on. So you're and I think you've allotted the church you've got. We have yes, yes. Have. before you get to the church. Correct. So do you because but things will change. Can we keep it on the list of the just a running? Well, yeah, because she deleted it, yeah. Yeah, it's still, a lot of things are going to go up and down. So mm -hmm. you can right. leave from here, yeah. which I've done. I've taken some of the numbers that were budgeted just out for yeah. now, but you saw the right. funds or whatever. Then there's what's left in the budget can go up or down. We still can get more requests. So you're not well, saying sure. the request is closed yet. Yeah, yeah you're right. still you're still working at six well, thousand plus. Well, see, as the as the energy committee goes looking for right. to that grant, there could be two hundred thousand. Yeah. Have. What about the fire department? The emergency service one. Yeah. Yeah, well, Greg Pause is working on cost estimates. Were we going to use ARPA for that? That's what they came here for. Yeah. So we should probably put that on here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so, yeah, the number though. Not, <laughs> where would well, like please, to put that? Yeah, no, that's right. <laughs> the scope that is still up in the air. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because that's when they started a little one that got gigantic. That's right. Right. Okay. You okay. wait. Did we the salt? Okay, so the so, salt brine. Did we end up? Did yeah, we, did right. we, did we, yeah, we did that. Yeah. Yeah. Really? No, no, we didn't have to end. Oh, we didn't yeah, have to. That's right. Oh, we did that. Oh, yeah. That's right. That came from the on a sign or something. Yes. Savings. And savings. Yeah. So I came up with ninety. Nine hundred ninety-seven thousand three hundred twenty-seven dollars. Yep. You did. Yeah. Nine hundred what? Nine nine seven three two seven. Like I said, it's still early. Oh, we pulled out the two hundred for the HVAC just because that was kind of in question. So we were just. Okay. But that's still on there. They come back in. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Like, because with over right. the, so the two hundred, I was over nine hundred. Yes. Yeah. So we were just kind of playing with numbers. Yeah. Uh, okay. I've got one point yeah. three. If you take out the the ones that you said to find on the money, so I'll give you a new list. We're going to adjust this. Okay. 
But let's, I mean, while we're I'm here, I'm really believe it. Or if it's it, you know, so. Oh, yeah. So I agree. a lot of those things. Right. And I think just like we're finding out now, some of the stuff happens by osmosis almost, and it just gets done and it'll come off our foot. And that's really your final decisions are going to have to be made. Did you exhaust all of the sources? And that'll start like now through the next six months. And that next six months from July to December, your last chance to obligate. So you basically have six months to keep doing this kind of stuff and watching projects come and go, but at some point you're going to close it and make harder decisions with that last bit of money. Especially with some of these projects that you want to get up and you have it out, you know, you're thinking, well, maybe we can do it with the money tonight. Okay. Wait, okay. So what do we want to do with the church? We're going to leave it for now. That's okay. At the, at the full amount? Well, I think so. Okay. Right? So, but we don't know what we're doing until... Yeah, yeah. We're still going to way to go and find and if out. She goes, again. They right. go to the village and get 50. Right. Yeah. You get 50 on there. But at some point, they <laughs> Okay. And then we'll decide how much that. And then we'll decide. Yeah, if we get more information again, again. Yep. Because if again, like uh, again with the HVAC stuff, if that all can come off, that right, that takes that. I'd say that. So that it, my understanding that that none of these are absolutely firm. Right. Correct. Correct. The li the, the library is going to be firm. Right. The yeah. goats will be firm. That's about it. And then the well, that's yeah. That's after they eat all that, not we. Yeah. 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 They're, they're well, right. thank you for keeping us on. She's gonna be here every week. She has so much fun. No, she's gonna go hit the village and say, "Well, you know, we could give right. me all our money." Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> One minute with you guys. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, all right. But at least we've parted it down that we got some idea. Yep. <laughs> at least. In our agenda earlier, that was one hour. Are yeah. we there? Yeah. Uh, we're two on that one. Yeah. I mean, uh, no, no, no. Where's the line? Yes. Yeah, you know what? Well, see, that's we have candy for them. But, but see, we got it done. Okay. Yeah. We won't do that again. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you didn't have anything else to do and you wanted to come spend time with us? Well, they just appeared meeting the other night. So, mm -hmm. have you told them anything? <laughs> <laughs> come on down, as I said. Uh, that was texting. Come on down. So, at a meeting with Eden, this is the check for your half of the truck that we just sold. Oh, we broke the check. We were talking with Ron the other day. Probably it's easier to yeah. write the checks back to get them out of our checkbook. Okay. Yep. It's also kind of an informative. They have called and said that the Chevy pickup is ready to move from the Chevy lot to the Alexis lot. That's the $128,000 truck. So once they receive that, they basically have given us like 10 to 20 days to pay for the cabin chassis. Was all written in the agreement. Okay. It's kind of like a heads up to everybody that this could just here comes a check. <laughs> Here's the bill. We need to pay it fast. And and that's where it is. Okay. And they told us ten days, the date twenty, it's twenty days because everybody has to approve everything. What was the value of that trade? That one? This one? No, no, no. The one that you were going to have the one twenty eight or something. Yeah. I think the drop hole one hundred twenty eight thousand. Yeah. That's still kind of rough because nobody yeah, yeah, runs on the right. cabin chassis. Yeah, right? Good, good. Thanks. Well, depending on where that went from the original run out of the printout, I think it was fifty two thousand five hundred. That's not great. So roughly fifty two thousand five hundred when they spec it, depending on where it went since September, it would be half of that cost. Yeah. Just had a conversation with them today about the mini pumper that the taxpayers agreed to. That truck is still no, no. a thought. <laughs> As of right now, we've stepped away from the Dodge because Dodge has not acknowledged any of the orders that Alexis has put in to build these trucks. Ford has said that they will give them four and they will mark one for Northland Parkington if we so wish. Means we have to do a change order on the truck. This all happened later. Was this 24 hours ago? So if we go to the Ford, they now have to tell us what the price of the Ford is going to be compared to what the Dodge was going to be, 
which means they need to figure out how this is all going to work because I told them I don't want to keep going back to the down saying I need more money, need more money. We've been waiting since September on this thing. So they're trying to work that out on their end in hopes that Ford will move a truck to them faster than what Dodge is leaving in our opinion. Yeah. So the pickup which we ordered second is coming before the first truck. Okay. And that should be hopefully within the next 10 to 15 days they tell us saying mm -hmm. that that truck is starting to get built. On the other hand, $64,000, I just had a quote for it, for the air packs that we've been trying to get grants for for the last four years that are going through. We've been through everything. We're not getting it. We're at the point now that the packs need to come off the truck, which is a total cost of $64,000 split between the two towns would be roughly $32,000. We're not asking you for the money tonight. We're just putting it on your radar. This is where we're going in the really near future is we're hoping to get to it. It's happening. It, it needs to happen. So three months, six months, two months with the yeah. air packs? We probably won't actually figure it out until after July 1st when the fiscal year ends. Okay. But we just got the pricing back. And this is really only solely for you guys split the money on the 16 models with the town of Eden, I think three years ago. Is that right? Yeah. All right. All right. I think it was 8,000 per town. So we're trying to get the packs that use that same model. So gotcha. all the packs are interchangeable. Okay. Yep. Rather than when they stop the manufacturing of that pack, we're still going to have those eight. Yep. We're going to have eight different ones. Now it's going to cost 16 different masks, 16 different models. So we're trying to pull it to the one piece. Yep. Thank you for trying to do that. Um, it may not be possible, but thank you for trying. So that's just something to put out on the radar. I think that was everything we yep. discussed, right? Yep. So the board needs to vote to give direction to Jen to take the 62,735 check, which is the 50% proceeds on this uh, <laughs> to Iowa and where we uh, tuck that away to fire equipment reserve fund until needed, which may be soon. Maybe it's a short trip. Hopefully the next few days. Yeah. Okay. I'll make both of I'll say okay. okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. That's all I got. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for all that effort. Hopefully, I just did it again right now. I'm going to meet the middle tomorrow. They're looking for one. They couldn't work anymore, but people that have to come in. I'm going to call them and tell them not to do it. So, thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just have him sell things. Yeah. Well, goodness. Okay. Um, is it the letter of hire for the highway position? Do we do we do we do that in executive? Because that's sort of tied into some other things. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All yeah. Okay. The sheriff patrol and communication contracts. Um, these are the two contracts that we sign every year for the budget amount which the voters approve. Yep. And you know, motion to approve the FY24 police patrol and communications contracts with Mount County Sheriff's Department. And all board members can sign this. Yep. Well, sign this one. Okay. No. Okay, need a motion there. Motion that sign it and yeah. approve it. Motion. Make the motion to sign it. Second. Is there two? <laughs> yeah, there are two. <laughs> it's patrol and contract. Yeah. yeah. It thinks it's pretty scary. <laughs> okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Okay, how about minutes? Uh, and I included, included them in the packet this time. <laughs> Good job. Oh, yeah, no, that's okay. Wow, that's what 
I'll make a motion to approve your minutes, Jeff, sir. Um, Oh, I'll keep Savannah. Uh, oh, no. yeah, to approve the minutes. Yes, I'll do that. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, my bedtime's 8.32. <laughs> I know. I know. I shouldn't have sugar for supper. It'd be much better to have something else. Mm -hmm. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. I abstain. You're abstained. That's right. We're okay. Uh, let's see. We're doing the town warrants. Let me do that right now. Is there anything in the old new business we need to actually talk about? I'll try to get out of that. Yeah, copier. Right. Oh, right. 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 Doing the copier and the, and the announcement about that. Right. Yeah. The copier came up for renewal of lease. They started meeting with us and we came up with a couple of cost saving things, actually. So the like monthly cost is less than the prior lease, which is good. One of them is to switch to a digital fax system instead of a separate line because Consolidated was charging a bunch of money for a very low use fax line. So we got rid of that, switched to digital system. Digital system costs a little bit, but it's, we can just get rid of that miscellaneous line library. The new cost is $298.68 a month, uh, 63 months. The National Business Technologies Group needs voter select board approval to vote. Uh, authorized Chris Scott Jones to sign a new lease. So moved. Second. <laughs> uh, in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Mm -hmm. There you are. Hey. And a, a uh, an announcement from the delinquent tax collector. It's got to be one of you guys. It's not us. <laughs> okay. So I sent an email. Well, Ken Moulton did. Please share the following information with the select board after meeting. The total 2022-2023 delinquent tax delinquent amount, including the 515 interest and penalty, is $163,888.05. In comparison, the total delinquency for 2021-2022 tax year was $121,225.25. HFA BHAT program has been great at assisting homeowners get delinquencies in prior years and late payments in the current year paid in full. So this, pro yeah. this program goes yeah. away June 12, 2023. We are including a flyer on that program in the delinquent notices. Hopefully, our homeowners will take advantage of the program if they can qualify for it. And the pamphlet up there sending out states, are you past due on your utilities or NFLFUFA property taxes? <laughs> yeah. Vermont Housing Finance Agency BHFA is accepting applications for the Vermont Homeowner Assistance Program. Eligible homeowners who are behind on their housing expenses due to the pandemic can receive grants for assistance with mortgages utilities such as water, sewer, electricity, home heating, property taxes, and homeowner or condominium association fees. All applications must be received by June 12, 2023. Visit vermontpath.bhfa.org or call 833-221-4208 for more information. Well, well there were more delinquent this year, but not that's that right. This is mail. Mail from the. Oh, okay. You need that one? Do we need to make a motion on Jen's memo? Oh, sorry. That's part of the part of the request is to, under the finance memo, is to make a decision on your opioid money transfer to one of the local opioid uh, mediation and remediation right. agencies. So she provides some list of recommendation and meets your direction. If you vote that tonight, she'll continue to send it to those people until the 
your board or a future board changes it. I would say I'd keep it simple for her. You can say revisit every year, you can say until we tell you something different. So we're sending it to several places now? <laughs> no, those are the parts we get. Those are the Right. You can have Okay, what do you think? Did we? We didn't do this last year? Did we get money last year? This was this is clearing out our so oh it's it 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 okay. fall it started. So we okay. Just, we decided I remember getting money. Yeah, okay. so every every year we under the national settlement agreement that we signed on to, we have to once a year we have to report to the trustees of the claim, which is a big attorney firm out in Michigan about what we did with our money. Right. You, have, you have two choices. You can fill a whole bunch of paperwork to say use it for non-opioid use, or you can say we sent it to Genesis for us or let me care of or any of those other people. Okay. So they need to track that. Okay. Whether sending it to non-opioid means you don't get any more, I don't know that. But the okay. intention was that we would get it and set it. In the service. Right. Right. That was three years ago when it started. Right. Right. So anyway, this will be an annual so, kind of May June question from the does anybody have something they're passionate about with that money? I think going to Janice Promise makes sense. I agree. They're yeah. doing so much in the community. They really it's are. It's easy. Yep. Let's do it. Okay. We get the motion that we send it to Cheryl. I'll make that motion that we send the seven seventy two forty seven hundred and seventy two dollars and forty cents to Janice Promise. Okay. Madam Second. Okay. <laughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Okay. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Now. Now. We got it all. We got it all. Now we need to go into executive session. Oh, sorry. There was one more thing. Oh, oh. I didn't mention. I put it out there. Oh, oh yeah. So this is from the North Hyde Park. So we usually don't post agendas out there. And I'm wondering if you want me to start posting the agendas for the Planning Commission, DRB, and Select Board, or we could put this as just a blanket, leave it posted out there, and then they can do their own due diligence to check the website. So it depends on if you want the expense of you going out there or just like have a blank. Go on. This is gonna go at the post office in North Lake Park? Okay. Yeah, or the current agenda, whichever one you folks decide. Regular current agendas. Do we put it's on the front page? I was gonna say, do we put the agenda at the Honey Park Post Office? Yes, we do. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, we're required to do the <laughs> we're required to do the town clerk and two. Ah, so yes. it's here. So the village and the spot right. library goes together. Right. Well, I think it, because it gets put on front porch floor, right. right, that really takes care of it. So I think putting something yeah. like this in the North Side Park Post Office is fine. Okay. Right. I think it's fine. Thank you. Okay, now executive session. Sure. <laughs> motion to go into executive session. I, I got a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. That's right. It was turned off. Oh. Here's the motion that. Uh, Roland will follow through with a uh, with a letter of hire for the highway crew person that was their uh, their everybody their preference um, that we have with the folks that already have it's an added two dollars to the base um, and that uh, Ron and Susan will pursue. Uh, developing a letter of hire for the person uh, for the the planning commission's preferred right. choice for um, for that position. So okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. So I need to abstain. From oh, that's right. You, what a person. Well, yeah, yeah. You should. So you go ahead and abstain from the whole thing. You can make it. Well, no, you can break it out. I need to abstain from the the two dollars base flag right. into conflict. Right. 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 But okay. you can be in on the higher. Right. Right. So right. I can just right. 
So just make a little note that she's abstained from, mm -hmm. from part of that prayer. You can ask to break up a portion. Yeah. Yeah. Make, we have a motion to adjourn the whole next supper. Motion to adjourn. I second that. Dude, I know this is a long one, but we got a lot done. I mean, getting that awesome.